It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. Paul's going to rant <laughs> about Windows 8 creators complaining about Windows 11. Really? Really? We'll also talk about the new AMD desktop CPUs. Microsoft drops Kaizala. Kaiwata? And a very good game coming with the September Games with Gold, plus a couple of great app picks of the week. It's a good jam-packed Windows Weekly just around the corner. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 792. Recorded Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. Arbiter of Lies. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Give your team an engaging IT development platform to level up their skills. Volume discounts start at five seats. Go to itpro.tv slash windows and make sure to mention WW30 to your IT Pro TV account executive to get 30% off or more on a business plan. And by Infrascale. Infrascale delivers industry-leading data protection through backup and disaster recovery. Visit infrascale.com slash twit to sign up for a free demo and see how Infrascale protects your business today. Hello, winners and Hugh Dozers, too. It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott is here, therott.com. Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. We have a quorum. It's time to gavel us to order. We're voting you off the island. You know, I feel bad about the people who don't have a hammer gavel. They have the little, the, have you ever seen yeah. that? The little thing yeah. gavel? Yeah. yeah. That's not, you want the hammer. Yeah. You can't bring a hammer down I with a little so knob. I think snaps off the, the rod, you know? Yeah, it goes flying. Maybe that's why they started yep. doing that. Yeah, they had to put up a net like in a baseball stadium so you don't get nailed by the camera. <laughs> Whoa! Sorry, bailiff. <clears throat> Didn't mean to it's hit you in the, the head. Kids. That's it's common sense. Kids. Order! Order! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to talk about Windows. This is going to be a, a challenge for Paul and Mary Jo because there is okay. no uh, there's no build. There's no That's new true. build of Windows. How are you going to do a show with no new Windows build? Well, fortunately, there was some new stupidity this week that I can't wait to talk yeah. about. Oh, somebody said we should have a Therant every week. Yeah. <laughs> every week get a new ready. Therant. And now, get ladies and gentlemen, for one today. get the gong because it's time for a Therant. There's a lot of background for this one, though. So I uh, earlier this year, I finished up that series, the Programming Windows series, which yeah. was the history of Windows. Yeah. And I, really, and I talked to Mary Jo about this a lot, um, not just on the show, but privately. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, look, I, I don't mean this is going to sound offensive to people that went to war, but I feel like I have some version of PTSD from the Steven Sanofsky era. Like I, I, okay, it's I, mild. I, I, I You're not having it's, nightmares. It, it's, uh, well, yeah. I, actually, I have dreamt about it. And I, Mary Jo experienced a lot of the same stuff that I did, so yeah. I think she can at least relate yeah. to it. Um, it was a, definitely a form of trauma. I mean, I've had <laughs> horrible things happen to me in my life, um, for sure. And from, but from a professional perspective, this was easily the most awful thing that's ever happened. What? And, really? Um, and no. it was, oh, yeah. No. It was really know, hard to write about. <laughs> again, really? You know? I was reading his series as he was writing it about this era. And I had to, a few times I just had to stop reading the article because I got so mad or I'd just be like, How did that really happen? And I'd look it up. I'm like, yep, it sure did. And you the, just kind of yeah. block some of this out of your mind because wow. it was so the thing I, horrific. The thing I, left, I, I, <laughs> I went into this era with a sense of dread because I, I listen, I wrote this in an article. I just wrote this in an article. I, I, I don't know how other people per, deal personally with the bad things that have happened to them. My particular coping mechanism, which is probably not super healthy, is I, I try to forget it. I just pretend that yeah. it never Barry, happened and I move on. I do that I, yeah, too. I just, no wonder you've yeah. got just, trauma. Yeah. So I realized <laughs> as I went into this that I had I was doing this with this particular era. You need to go and somewhere it's not just where all, you can shatter pottery or something, <laughs> yeah. right? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's why I play Call of Duty. Um, <laughs> exactly. That's what you need I, to do. The thing I didn't write in the, any of those articles. And the thing I, I will probably never deal with directly is the personal stuff that happened between me. 
and Stephen Sanofsky in particular, um, <laughs> who was an insane madman that would write me at, at three o'clock in the morning, these 25,000 word emails. And then I would write back like one or two sentences because I couldn't deal with it. And then he would write another 25,000 word. And the thing I always used to think to myself was, there are people who actually work for him or work with him at Microsoft yeah. who have to respond to these emails, you know? And I, I, I don't know how anyone dealt with that. And um, the simple <laughs> thing I will say is that um, Mary Jo and I both experienced some form of that era ending and people from Microsoft slash Wagner and some calling us and saying, we're sorry. <laughs> this, will, this, will, this will never happen. I mean, that literally, like, we're sorry. Wow. We don't know what the we don't know what was happening exactly between you guys, but he's gone, and we want you to know that things are going to go back. Ding to dong, the witch is dead. So, <laughs> yeah. which so, articles should we go through to really get that PTSD? You, you won't. Uh, you won't. That's my point. Is I wrote that stuff without oh, you going through it. any of that. You didn't post. No, it. I can't. I, it's too personal. Oh, it's that's just hysterical. Too, it's it's so not. I'm looking at your not, Windows eight one stories, but yeah, it won't be there. Right. No, but it's you did write the about the Windows eight. No, you did write about the Windows eight history. Oh, of course I did. But what I mean is yeah. I didn't write about the personal stuff. In other words, what oh, I went oh, through with okay. this person is not part yeah. of the history of Windows. Well, it's part of my history. What, what, it, it, what did he do that was so awful? He was... <laughs> well, I, I just said I didn't want to talk about it, Leo. He was a... Uh, he was bipolar, for one thing. And uh, I had instances where I was his like pet chimp. Like I was the happiest... He was... I was the person he wanted to be with and talk to more than anything. He would be like a little child jumping up and down. And then I, then I would just be honest about the products he was writing and he would set out to assassinate me personally and professionally. Wow. And um, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's a little hard. I, I can't, I, I don't want to get into it too far, but the point is there are people associated with him who still revere him to this day. There is an element that we see today in politics and just in our world of misinformation and people just overtly lying and presenting it as facts and not caring about the truth. Gaslighting, those, they call that. Those people innovated. <laughs> like they I, they almost created it out of whole cloth. And um, Should we just, just from hard... now on say Stephen Sanofsky is a person who shall not be named and just... That's what I say. Yeah, let's say <laughs> that. She does it. From now on, yeah, no but, more. Uh, uh, but I, I just say this as background because... Um, there are a group of people. I, I remember we, you know, Julie Larson Green was his, um, like, kind of chief, like, top lieutenant or whatever. She took over and, for, uh, for a while. For very brief, well, partially and only briefly. But I almost saw that as a punishment, like, um, you, you're going to fix this mess you made, you know. Um, she was the most unqualified person imaginable. But we were behind her, Mary Jo and I, briefly before Mary Jo took off during the Surface Pro 4 event. <laughs> and um, why did you when take I off Mary Jo? Because she's the wife. Really, really? Wow. 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 Um, I almost got tackled so, and, in the hall as I was running. And I yeah. said to her, I asked her <laughs> if I could take her photo. And she said, uh, she said, okay, but as long as you're not mean to me. And I, I thought to my mean to you, <laughs> like you arbiter of lies. <laughs> you, you, are you kidding to me? Like you, you think I'm mean to you <laughs> like that. That was crazy to wow. me. Wow. Um, but another person that was part, so you have SS and then Julie Larson Green, and the next person down was Jensen Harris. And him and I, him and I actually have a long history, and he's a good guy. But the, the couple of points I'll just make about him was before the, whatever the PDC was, where the office team, which is where they were from at the time, announced the ribbon interface, remember? So it was probably PDC yeah. 2005 or seven, whatever year it was. Mm. Um, he emailed me and said, hey, I'd like to show you something before the show. And I met with him at the, Los Angeles Convention Center ahead of the PDC, and he opened a laptop, he showed me the ribbon. And he explained all the stuff and why they did it and what they were doing and everything I thought was really interesting. And I, I'd never heard of this guy. And I said, um, I said, this is great, but I said, why, why, why did you want to show this to me? And he says, well, I have a story to tell you. You actually got me my job at Microsoft. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and when Office 97, the first, I'm sorry, Outlook 97, the first version of Outlook came out, it didn't handle internet email. It was just uh, mappy, like uh, Microsoft email. So he wrote an extension for it as some kind of add-in that would let it work normally with internet email. And I wrote a little tiny thing, just a paragraph about it. And I said, you should get this. It turns Outlook into a usable email program. The guy who ran Outlook at Microsoft read it, talked to his some underling and said, hire this guy. And they did. And he got a job in office and on he went. 
So Windows 8 so was he my was, fault. He was the chief. He was the chief designer at Office, right? And then became the chief designer at Windows, right? You know what? I don't know exactly what his title was, okay. but I'll tell you something. This guy has no background in design at all. Oh, interesting. He went to, he went to school for music. <laughs> oh, he was, he was a good. He was a good guy, but yeah, you're right. Like so, the, uh, these people who were really not qualified to be doing what they were doing were doing it, and this was. I think Steven Sanofsky surrounded himself with people who were not threatening to him. Frankly, I think that that was a lot of it. And Jensen, like probably like Julie Larson Graham, was a really nice person. He was a really nice guy, mm -hmm. but I, I, I knew something was wrong. It was the I, st I, I, had, I recorded an extensive interview with him for Windows 8 when they revealed the UI, whatever, whenever that was. I think it was mid year a year and a half before I came out, or whatever it was, or a year before I came out. <laughs> and I, it was confusing, <laughs> to say the least. So we, we, we talked for an hour, and I recorded the whole thing. I don't believe I ever published this interview mm. um, I, because I was so freaked out by what he was saying. And the one key <laughs> phrase I will never forget, and I've told this story before, but I said, it was just like the story we talked about last week where I said, went to the Windows Phone guys, and I said, hey, I need to know the names of these things so mm. I can call them something. And it's like, oh, we don't know what the names are. No, I'm like, you do know what the names are. It's in the code. Like, it's, uh, you created a UI, that UI has a name, it's in there. You know, you got to be able to tell me what it is. And so I had the same question with Jensen about the charms. And I said, mm -hmm. so the charms are a flyout, a panel, a toolbar. And he said, no, Paul, <laughs> they're just charms. <laughs> I said, no, Jensen, they're not. <laughs> They're a they're a, a widget, an interface, uh, a, a, and he said, "No, they're just charms." And the start menu is, or start screen is just Windows, and I'm like, "No, no, no, that's not true." And and it was the moment; it was like the king has no clothes moment for me. Like the yeah. there, that there was no thinking behind this at all. Like this I, is I, why I don't <laughs> like big corporations because they're a little bit of an echo chamber. So in yeah. the, what he was saying was. Internally, we think of this yes. as this. What we do. You, well, actually, as an outsider, would like to liken it to something go. else, but right. no, no, no. And yeah. and let me tell. You, listen, the group listen, think that to, he's. I got, didn't go to school for this, okay? <sighs> but as a as a communicator of a sort, I can tell you that one of the key ways you can explain something to someone is to compare it to something they already understand. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but not in a so, corporate environment. In yeah. a corporate well, environment, it's group think, and they and yeah. and. Yeah. So I understand what he was trying to. Do. Same. I think Same. what he was doing was parroting a company line, which was yeah. really just yeah. a Windows division line. Yeah. But that's which what, was an us against them divisional that's problem. Think. That's yeah. corporate. It's, that's exactly. Yeah. That's was, why I hate yeah. big corporations. I, I, I hate them. Yeah. And I walked away from that like, oh my God, what has happened to this guy? I really care about. It, this is nonsense. Uh, they don't know what they're talking. They don't know what they're doing. This happens all and, the time at big companies where somebody, usually a leader or boss, says something that's patently wrong. Yep. But it gets adopted as right. part of the company yep. song, yep. and right. and 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 everybody drinks the Kool Aid. And uh, right. but the rest of us <laughs> in the outside world are saying, well, "You're nuts. That's not the way it is." And they yeah. say, "No, no, it is because." Well, to recap, yeah. <laughs> Windows 8 came out. Windows 8 got rid of the start button. It got rid of the start menu. Oh. It had a full screen start experience, as they called oh. it. That only made sense on tablets, which no one owned or used. Everyone had <laughs> traditional form yeah. factor computers. Oh. They, for the first time, offered no way to go back to the old interface. Every major <laughs> UI innovation from the Windows 95 desktop to the XP start menu to whatever else you want to talk about, those versions of Windows offered a way to go back to the old thing because people were used to the old thing and some people weren't going to be able to move forward so quickly. Windows 8, which had the most radical design change, offered no way. There was it was our way or the highway. There was no there was no plan B. There was no nothing. How, it was a disaster. How aware do you think they are when this kind of thing goes on? I mean, it happens at Apple. It's going to happen tomorrow. You know, a week yeah. from today uh, at Apple, where they're going to say yeah. things like, "We invented astrophotography." Or right. you know, and <laughs> and they're going to say that, or we invented the yeah. periscope camera, mm -hmm. and right. so everybody I, I, in the outside right. world knows it's not true. Do this you think a, they are here, aware? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a timely yeah. comparison, and this will help you understand it because it's something you'll understand. No, it's <laughs> a. Um, I watched a, a documentary last night about uh, John McAfee on Netflix. It is horrible. I can't wait it to watch that. Horrible. Yeah. It's the, one of the worst things I've ever watched. It's not worth watching, or it's just because it's no, it's, it's horrible because it's true. It's, 
Oh. Oh, it's not well, worth it's watching. horrible because it's true as well. So here's it was <laughs> poor, it was this poorly is, made. This is uh, okay. So okay. This guy spent the last years of his life on the lamb and yeah. and the point of it is he invented this world in which the the narcos from Mexico, the US government, whoever was all after him. He had supposedly bugged every computer on earth. Had you know done all these things? He'd done none of it. None of it was happening. And throughout this documentary, he's like, "We got to go. Our lives are in danger. The, the bad guys are after us." It, <laughs> none of it was true. None of it was true. But there was this moment. Well, that's what happens right at, when you are smoking a lot of that thing he was making. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, right. But there's a moment at the end of the documentary where one of the <laughs> filmmakers had gone back years later and was with him again. And in a moment of drunken, drugged up, whatever nonsense, he finally he admitted. He had made everything up. Oh, that, wow. That he was creating his own reality. And um, wasn't it more interesting than <laughs> no, real life or something it, like it that? it isn't, no. And I feel like Windows 8 was like that. <laughs> like, the, the guys who We're going to see an Elon just, Musk documentary in years yes, to come. Yes, the same thing. Similar. It would be the same thing. Yes. Yep. <laughs> the, the guys who believed in SS and what he was doing may may, may have believed that what they were doing is right. They may have. I, I, I don't understand following this whatever but they did the people outside of that group did not did not there were teams at microsoft who over time all agreed separately we're not working with you like what you're doing is insane we're not doing it we're not going to make a version of office that runs under metro or whatever we're not you know like over time the whole company came to this by the time windows 8 was going to be released microsoft as a company already st understood this was going to be a disaster and that they needed mm -hmm. to take steps immediately to correct this as quickly as possible. They got rid of him before the thing was launched and they <laughs> talked to, remember Stephen Ballmer came out at the launch or at mm -hmm. whatever, the, the PDC yeah. that year. And he said, we're all rapid release now. We've been building toward this moment. We're gonna iterate, iterate, iterate. And the point, but they had to because the Windows 8 was so awful, so yeah. awful. All right, so this is a long story. I'm already 30 minutes into this, but the point of this is, this is all background because I've been sitting here, I wrote my piece about Windows 7 and Windows 8 and my history thing and I'm like I'm gonna put this behind me and I got on Twitter yesterday and <laughs> god damn it Jensen Harris has come out of a hole in some woods somewhere and he is criticizing the Windows 11 start menu oh and I gotta tell you we got rid of that many years ago the things he writes about how the Windows 11 start menu are wrong are <laughs> multiple, uh, multiple versions, multiple wor times worse. What they did to start in Windows 8, like That's it funny. is, there is such a lack of self awareness here that it. By the way, he's he's kind of right. It, it is amusing to me that he confused search highlights with the start menu because he didn't know what start was when he was making it. <laughs> but you know, now he still doesn't know what it is. Like that's hilarious. But I. You know, it's like we've all heard the term like pot kettle black, right? This may sound a little dramatic. This is like a drunk driver pointing to someone not using their blinkers and saying, that guy's being bad. <laughs> you know, like, no, you you destroyed Windows. You destroyed it. And now you're complaining about a version of Windows that, yes, has <laughs> He's not wrong about this searching for Chrome He's not problem. wrong about what he's saying. Well, hold on a second. Actually, he is wrong. Oh. So go back up to what he writes about this. Okay. What, what did he think was going to happen here? Like, I know. Does he? No, I no, mean, what seriously. What he's trying to criticize, though, is, isn't wrong. He just, he, he's not he, the guy who can throw any No, he stones, has no so. moral authority here at all. <laughs> but the, the, the thing he's talking, so first of all, the start menu is Microsoft's flagship user experience. Yeah, it is. You destroyed it. <laughs> yeah. It is, it should represent the very best UI design the company is capable of. Yeah, it should. You put a Fisher-Price front end onto Microsoft's flagship client operating system. <laughs> And you're complaining about Windows 11. The Windows 11 start menu looks great. Yeah, but that but could not be said of the Windows 8. He's not wrong 8. about what happens when you search well, for Chrome in it. Except for one thing. What is he, what's he searching for? Does he seriously think that the way to find Chrome is to use the Windows 11 start menu? Well, that's how no, you it would be if I had find Chrome. Chrome. If I had Chrome, if I, oh, I if guess If you not. had Chrome installed. Like, yeah. Guess what happens when you type in Chrome when it's installed? Oh, okay. It comes up under Brings best match and it just works. Right. I got it. Yeah. Okay. It literally says best best so, match, Google Chrome. Right. So it shouldn't be a web search in the start menu is what you're saying. Now, look, he, his complaints about ads and UIs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, fine. 
uh, Windows 8, first version of Windows that had ads. You did that. <laughs> you did that. Your stupid new mobile platform brought ads to Windows for the first time ever. I, in, in 2012, whatever year that came out, 2011, maybe before it came out, I said ads were a slippery slope and they cheapen Windows and the point was, it was only going to get worse over time. And so, yeah, here we are on Windows 11. It's worse. He congratulations. Says, uh, he says, congratulations, Microsoft. They're fixing it, thanks to me. I'm going to kill this person. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me it doesn't say that. He says, less than 24 hours later, pretty impressive speed, Microsoft. Great start. Uh, he is. He is. <laughs> Please Please put, take that off the screen before I lose control. <laughs> I'm just he is, just he, is the last you, he is the last person on earth to be discussing this topic. Microsoft has he already gotten to work fixing some of these things. The Bing wallpaper ad is gone, and a few of the corners have been fixed up a bit. It's cool Don't to worry. see. Don't worry. The Bing ad, ad will be back. Be back. <laughs> How fast they can update content server side. So first of all, um, the, the, the search, I'm sorry, the search highlights experience, which is not the start menu. Which is what he's mm -hmm. describing. Yeah, yep. is web based. It's easily to fix. Easy yep. to fix. Yeah, yep. one of my best tips about Windows 11 and Windows 10, by the way, is how you get rid of that thing because it's terrible. Mm -hmm. You'll recall, I described this as a distraction. Um, when I I did this, I had to turn it on to take a screenshot of it. I turned this off on all my computers, but you know, you go to search for something. Not typically on the web, by the way, because you're using mm -hmm. Bing and no one normal does that, but. <laughs> um, you're trying to find something on your computer. You're trying to run an app. You don't run very often. Whatever the reason you might go, might do that. If you type Windows key plus S or Q, search highlights comes up. I don't know what this is. It's a distraction. Uh, today, they're talking about Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> you know, great. <laughs> I, that has nothing to do with what I was doing. Right. And I'm just distracted just enough a on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I may literally forget what I was doing when yeah. I see something like yeah. this. Uh, I, I don't understand... Why this UI exists? Well, I, actually, excuse me. I know exactly why it exists, but I, there is no no one can point to it and say, "Well, here's why it makes sense for users. Here's how it makes your life better, or makes you more productive, or keeps you in the flow." This is literally the opposite of keeping you in the flow. <laughs> this is a distraction that makes you forget why you were here in the first part place. Part of this is Bing. I mean, look, I, I clicked the button that said, yeah, uh, let's go to yeah, the Chrome download page. Of course. And then they've got people, before I get to the Chrome download link, people also ask, why won't Windows 10 let me download Chrome? That's why awesome. is it taking 20 <laughs> hours to download Chrome? Why should you, you should install Chrome on your laptop? How to install Chrome on my computer? But then I have a whole, and Google doesn't do this, trending on Bing page. More distractions, right. Harley Quinn Harley season Quinn, four. Seriously. Bezos notes ignored. Well, you know, that's kind of interesting. I want to read these instead of do what I was going to do, which was download exactly. Chrome. And if you spent, it, listen, I don't know, it's different for different people, but if I spent 10, 15 seconds on that, I would completely forget why I was there in the first mm -hmm. place. I, 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 anyway, look. So I download Chrome and now it says Microsoft Edge runs in the same technology as yeah. Chrome. Yeah, yeah. Now the, someone's going to say to you, Leo, but Leo, Go, you know, Microsoft, uh, Google does the same thing, sure, right? Sure. They're just as bad. Yeah. No, Stalin and Hitler were both terrible. <laughs> I, I get it. It doesn't make one of them okay, okay because the other one was doing it. I just want to point you know, out, he just compared Microsoft and Google to Stalin and Hitler. Listen, I think historically I can make a case for this. <laughs> I, I, look, but whatever. <laughs> no, it's like I, the point, look, I sometimes you also, let's, let's talk about communication. Sometimes you exaggerate to make a point. Listen, Something else being terrible doesn't make the thing you're complaining about okay. Yeah. It's still terrible, right? Like, but Google does it too. Yeah, great. They're both it's awful still companies. Awful. Yeah. I get yeah, it. Yeah, No, I agree. One with of you. these companies could take the high ground, and neither one of them is doing it. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Now you got the me stalling Chrome before on I'm done, here. <laughs> before I'm done ranting, I also want to address the feedback I always get when I say it, write anything about Windows 8, whether it's this topic or the article series I did, I hear this every single time. It makes me insane. They'll say, well, yeah, but I, I still think the Windows 8 UI was the best one ever on a tablet. Like that somehow what we did in Windows 10 was terrible and now what we're doing in Windows 11 is terrible. And you know what? Nobody cares, dude. Nobody cares. Because Windows 8 did not institute a great era of tablet computing that we're still enjoying today. The fact that there's some tiny minority of people prefer or need a tablet is interesting. The, the fact that Windows 10 or Windows 11 might be less ideal for those computers is interesting. 
But the, the, the fact remains that 90 something percent, it's probably a high 90 something percent of people that use Windows today, as in 2012, do so on a traditional form factor computer without touch, without a pen. They don't care about swiping in from the sides. They're not touching stuff. They just, it's a computer, they get work done. So if this is like what's still in your head, your head's in the wrong place because that's not what's important. It was never what's important. It is the central problem with Windows 8 that they focus so strongly on something that nobody used that they made the experience worse for virtually everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll grant you that. By the way, you were right. Ridiculous. I searched for Chrome after installing it and, it's, right. and the right answer shows match. up. Exactly. Yeah. What a great UI. <laughs> yeah, smart. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it's smart. It's even smarter than you're making it look because... If you just type CH, probably Chrome would oh, already be selected. Yeah. You did enter. I always mistype stuff. So I typed crine yeah. at first, C H R I N E, <laughs> and it found it. So, yeah, it's actually. That doesn't mean start search is perfect. I'm, no, but it's better saying, than I would have thought. It's, it's it, the thing, the thing he, he doesn't explain what he's doing. It's like, oh, look at all this. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Nobody uses the start menu to search the internet. Right. What are you talking about? No, that's about? right. That's a good point. I didn't even... I didn't that's even, crazy. I didn't even think of that one. And by I the way, if you do do that, you deserve that UI. That, <laughs> that, that's terrible. Doesn't Microsoft say it's kind of a universal search, though? I mean, isn't that part of the... It is yeah. part of it, yeah, for sure. So but they're, they're that, encouraging so, that. No, of course they are, because they want you to hit Bing. Right. And that makes yeah. Bing more popular. And oh, right. we get to show you ads. Oh, and right. look, we have MSN mm -hmm. things. This is all yeah. part of this game they're playing in Windows, right. driving you to their own... Products yeah. and service. When that's I want Chrome, is. I always just go to Facebook and search there. I think exactly. That's, <laughs> thank you. That's Makes actually sense. that's a great example. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Actually, I put on my VR head, headset and I do it that way. Yeah, that's a good. I idea. use my I use my I eyes to type. I say, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, I I feel bad because our editors have been using Windows 8.1 uh, for years since it okay. came out uh, on their 8 .1 Dell. 8.1 was a little less horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> 8.1 was an improvement uh, on their Dell uh, Precision yeah. workstations. We have new ones we just bought in mm. sometime in the next Windows 11. few weeks. Windows 11 on brand new Dell workstations. So I thought I had PTSD. Those guys are still using <laughs> Windows 8.1. Windows 8.1. Wow. Wow. Yeah. When they search for Chrome, they get nothing. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh. All right. Well, yeah. your point I mean, is well like, taken. I, I think your point is well taken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just... It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I, I, I'm not as upset as you are about it, but I get it. I get it. I was, yeah, I, but. I, no, I you know what made here. me upset? I, I was like, I laughed about it when I first saw that he was saying this. I'm like, <laughs> oh, brother. Jensen Harris criticizing Windows 11, right? Oh, brother. But then people right. started chiming in and going, yeah, Jensen's right. Windows 8 was better. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm like, here we go. who yep. are you people? Like, where where yeah. did you come from? <laughs> the history rewriters come flying out of the woodwork, you know? Like, yeah. no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let, never forget what they did to Windows and, and that they ruined it. <laughs> like, never forget this. It is yeah. so important that we not forget that. How long was no, eight the dominant the four, the the well three years right? So but before Windows eight, eight one came out to make. Oh, Windows eight was for one year. So one eight year. one came out in a right. year and it was it was free. Yeah. The next year, Windows done. eight one one came out. The thing yeah. people kind of forget is by the time Windows eight wound down before Windows ten came out, we had a start menu was back. Uh, you could replace the full screen experience entirely. They had yeah. floating windows. Remember, one of the biggest things they had was, mm -hmm. was all these things were all full screen. The, yeah. the initial version of Snap was ludicrously um, so limited where like a, <laughs> one app had to work on a side panel that was a fixed width yeah. and they added they arbitrary width. Work. Yeah, they finally, yeah, they finally figured that out. And then, you know, Windows 10 just kind of cleaned it up. So Windows, Windows 10 in many ways is like, you know, Windows right. 8.2 or 8.3 or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. But mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, they wanted to get rid of the brand. I mean, I, yeah. Windows right. 8 was so tarnished as a brand that they, yeah. they skipped the number. That's how bad it was. <laughs> they didn't even want you to think this was the next one not of eight. Even, not they even like, succession. no, no, it's, it's, it's we're going double digits new. with this one. Yeah. It's yeah. way different. No. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because you know, I, I started reading more about Windows 8 after I saw this. I'm like, was it really as horrible as I thought? And I went back and started yeah, looking at my was. articles on it. And, <laughs> and the thing that yeah. was the most horrible was they knew this was going to be a train wreck. That's right. Like they oh knew my God. because they had test, testers, especially in businesses, telling them, 
you guys aren't really going to do this, right? Like you're not going to make a non-desktop centric right. OS that isn't built for keyboards, right? Like you're not going to really roll this out as like your new flagship, right? And I kept thinking, I don't think they're going to do it. I think, I think they're going to go right up to the yep. edge and then yep. they're going to be like, no, somebody, somebody is going to say to them, you can't do this. Like our customer base is businesses and they did it. And I'm like, okay, they ignored every single yeah. piece of feedback that they got that, you know, like Leo said, inside the bubble, uh, inside the corporation, they were like, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be great. So, all right. So, <laughs> since you're going down this path, I will also add I, another story I tell all the time about Windows 8 is people complain during testing. Like, the, you, there yeah. are UIs that are non-discoverable. For example, the charms were non-discoverable. Right. So right. you could do something. You might hit a keyboard command. You might move the mouse. The mouse mm -hmm. might kick over and hit the edge of the screen. And this UI would appear. And then you'd move the mouse and it would disappear. And then you wouldn't, re you, because you didn't do it on purpose, you had no idea how you yeah. triggered it. And you were like, what was that thing I just saw? What was that? And so people would say, hey, you, you need to have some yep. test or some um, uh, <laughs> training in the, in the product to explain to people, hey, before we get going, let me show you. Like when Here's you run Android change. for the first time, it says, hey, mm -hmm. we're using uh, gestures now. Let's step through. We're going to make sure you know how they work before we dump you in the system. It's just common sense. So they relented at one point and said, all right, we'll put something in the product during testing. We'll see how it goes. Universally. Yep. Perfect. This is exactly what we were talking about. You need to have training in here. You have it. Now people will understand how it works. And Sonofsky was like, yeah, we're not doing it. I don't care. Yep. Because <laughs> no, he said people beginning. will figure it out. People will figure yeah. it out. And he, yeah, this I'm was, like, no, this, they won't. <laughs> this was, this is, an, this is his longest lasting impact on Microsoft remains to this day. And it's about <laughs> feedback. It is paying lip service to feedback, pretending all you care about is feedback. You don't yeah. care about feedback at all. Exactly. You don't. Right. You just pretend that right. you do. And they did right. that with Windows 8. Uh, they do, they've been doing it ever since. And, um, you know, the, Windows 11 is the ultimate example of that because this is a product that shipped three months after they showed it to anybody. Got a bunch <laughs> of feedback. A bunch of people said, well, listen, this start menu, like Jensen points out. Oh, actually, he doesn't point out any of the actual problems with the start menu, by the way, because there are many. But he doesn't mention one of them. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of problems here. It doesn't do a bunch of stuff we're used to. Yeah, whatever. Don't care. And then a year went by, and now we're getting the second version of Windows 11. They, they added folders, and they added a layout feature that just a little bit changes the dial on what, what you see more of. And that's all they did. They did not address the complaints. In fact, they came out public. Well, no, that was with the taskbar. They, with the taskbar, they came out and said, yeah, we're not fixing those problems. Like, we hear you. Yeah. We know that some people like to put it on top or on the sides. We're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like they just that's mm -hmm. that's Windows today. So yeah, there are complaints we could make for Windows 11. Absolutely, um, he didn't hit on any of the important part, parts at all. Which you know my bet, I think he's a Mac user. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even saying that sarcastically. Like he's a design sure. guy, right? He's not. He's, he's probably not. a Mac user. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's probably an iPad Pro user because he was such a. <laughs> <laughs> big fan of touch and pen and everything uh, or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. Huh. Anyway, well, I guess this the point was his first time I, using huh. Windows 11 this week. He hadn't tried it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at this. A timely, a <laughs> timely chime doing? in. For, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can I uh, do an ad or would you like to rant some more? You know, Lee, I'm glad a, you he asked. He needs a breather. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I won't say, yeah, but I still prefer the Windows 8 tablet experience. I won't say yeah. that. <laughs> I will spiral in silence. <laughs> oh, good. That sounds like a uh, an Amber Alert. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> or or a hurricane's heading your way. No, Jensen Harris. Check here he comes. Yeah, here comes Jensen He's at Harris. The door. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll let Paul. Hurricane uh, Harris is coming. I'll let Paul handle his uh, his alerts, and uh, I will tell you about our friends at IT Pro TV, who I personally know and love it pro tv uh tim broom and don Pazette, i consider good friends they they came to us when they first started they said we're modeling it pro tv on twit we'd like to advertise i said well all right let me see what you're doing don and tim were uh it trainers when they you know in traditional classroom it trainers they uh, they they saw what we were doing here and they said this is a better way to do it this is a way to do IT training that's engaging, that's fun, that's available everywhere because it's on your TV, on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone, your Apple TV, your Roku, everywhere. 
So you, and you know they said so we'll make these videos. We'll get great people, people who are experts in the field, but are so passionate about IT that it's fun to watch them. You are going to learn. We talk a lot about IT Pro TV for anybody who wants to get into IT. It's a great place to get that cert. They have every cert under the sun uh, to get started in IT. We don't talk a lot about the business side of this. And, you know, if you have a company and you have an IT department, I think it's important to keep them uh, trained, to get them upskilled, to get them recertified. And this is something that you can give them as a benefit uh, that they will sh really appreciate. It's a great way to improve your retention, too, of IT professionals because they're going to say, boy, I, I like this. I want to keep taking more classes. We know people love IT Pro TV. 80% of users who, who start the video actually finish it. That is unheard of. That is a number beyond YouTube, beyond TikTok, beyond anything else. IT Pro TV is engaging. Your team will enjoy learning on their platform, but they will learn. And that's the key. And, you know, the, the industry is changing so rapidly. They need to learn. Your IT team needs to keep trained, needs to continue to learn because there's new software, there's new systems, there's new cyber threats, all of which they can learn about at IT Pro TV so they can make your business f sing. IT Pro TV will give you any of the certs your team needs or, or if they want to get recertified all in one place. Every vendor, every skill, Microsoft, of course, Cisco, yes, Linux, Apple, security, cloud. They even have compliance training. They have soft skills training like business and marketing so your whole company can learn at it pro tv they are there are seven studios in their beautiful gainesville studio we went out and visited them when they, when they opened it i was so impressed they're running monday through friday 8 a.m to 6 p.m constantly creating new stuff because it's always changing so that means everything in their library, 5,800 hours of downloadable content is up to date. It goes from the studio to the library in less than a day. I think they were inspired by us too with that, you know. You could do so much with an IT Pro TV business plan. Uh, their, their dashboard means it's easy to track your team's results. You can manage seats. You can assign and unassign team members. You can access monthly usage reports, make sure they're using it. You'll see metrics like logins, viewing time, tracks completed, and more. You can, you know, uh, manage your teams. You can create subsets. You can even inside individual episodes. They're all about 20 to 30 minutes. You can say, you, can you, by tomorrow, can you master this? And they'll, they'll want to, and they will, and they can. You'll get immediate insight into your team's viewing patterns and progress over any period of time. You'll get great visual reports. That's nice for you for uh, absorbing the information, but also to show the boss, to show the board or the sea level uh, so you they know that you're you're definitely getting your ROI so for individuals yes but also for businesses to get that IT development you need to level up your skills while enjoying the journey for teams as small as two as large as a thousand volume discounts start at five seats but we got a discount right out the box go to itpro.tv slash windows as an individual or as an enterprise you can use this code ww30. If your business, tell tell your account executive, whisper in his ear or her ear, WW30, 30% 30 off or more on a business plan. That, that holds for individuals too, by the way. ITPro.tv slash Windows, offer code WW30. Please use that because uh, then they know you saw it on Windows Weekly and that helps us. ITPro.tv slash Windows, offer code WW30. Zero. Okay, we've given Paul time. He's calmed down. He's calmed down. You know, I, for all of the talk about rants and whatnot, I think Mary Jo's rant about, um, what is it, uh, is Conversation it View? Focused in box. Yeah, that inbox. was pretty good, too. Uh, was, I know. think, I blame myself because we got new album art that shows you two tugging at, uh, tug yeah. at war, and, and it's sure. got a big red background, and it's like waving mm -hmm. a red flag in front of a bull. We just... It's right. our fault. I'm my fault. I set it off, and I apologize. Okay. I thank you for bringing up Focus Inbox right now because oh, I, no. I don't want to rant. I, no, oh, not no. a rant. Okay. Well, it's maybe a rant. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I am curious. Are other people getting a ton more Outlook spam yep. than normal? Oh, like Outlook Outlook spam. Outlook.com and ads. Okay. Out regular Outlook. But spam from also. other people, not Microsoft. 
from everyone. Yeah. Like every possible source of spam. So in other words, their spam filters are, are not working as well as they used not to. Not working. Yeah. And at first, when I put my little tinfoil hat on after a beer or three, I was like, you know what? They heard me ranting about Focused Inbox. So you know what they're doing? They found my email account and they're just going to flood it with spam to prove that I should be using Focused Inbox. But then I started seeing other people who don't have Focused Inbox enabled saying they're okay. getting more spam than usual. So you've done a little bit more legwork than Jensen Harris did because you didn't quite <laughs> fall for the, this happened, therefore this happened. He assumed right. that because he, with all of his influence, went onto Twitter and complained about something, Microsoft fixed it. When in fact, right. I bet they didn't even know he did that. <laughs> so, yeah, probably not. You know, and or, they, you know, they switched that thing up on some normal regular basis. I, I love the notion that you... That, like you just assume you did this, you know. Um, it's just so I had this. Okay. Like, I had this happen I, with I'm Gmail. I'm blaming beer for that. But. I had this happen. <laughs> no, no, not Gmail. you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you. I, you actually, you thought that and then saw other people and you said, "Oh, I, that's not correct." He thought okay. that and stopped thinking. Is was my. <laughs> I didn't mean you. I meant. Okay. I meant him. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I had this happen in Gmail where all of a sudden it just didn't. I used to yeah. get all my mail, go through Gmail as just kind of, a, you know, first stage sewage treatment plant. It would just yep. get all the worst stuff out and then I would do yep. other stuff later. And I stopped. I stopped going through Gmail because it just didn't do a very good job. So maybe, maybe there's something over time the spammers figure it out. Maybe I don't. I I have had like the past few years great success with Outlook spam filters. I'm not saying they never come through, but like very rare. Now I'm not kidding you. Like 15, 20 pieces of spam a day in all my Outlook. No, I, some, something clearly <laughs> changed. I, I honestly, yeah. for something like this, I I would almost always blame like human error. And I don't, again, I don't mean you. I mean, someone right. on the back end probably flicked a switch somewhere and yeah. some tenant of Outlook.com yeah. or whatever it is, or, or, or Outlook yeah. on the web, whatever, just yeah. spam got less effective, yeah. you know, or spam yeah. filtering. I bet it's something yeah. like that. They'll quietly yeah. fix it, you know. I hope. It's been a couple weeks now and I'm like, somebody hopefully... Here, here's, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is another example of this. So last week, my internet connection from Thursday through Sunday was terrible. I couldn't play video games effectively. I couldn't watch YouTube videos in 1080p. Like they would always auto uh, go down to the lowest, like 360p or 480p. Something was wrong. And I was gearing up. I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm going to have to contact our, or, well, what are they called now? Arsene is now called Astound or something because they are <laughs> astounding. <laughs> and, um, and Monday, I didn't call. Monday, it, was, it seemed fine. And then Tuesday, I got a thing in the mail from Astound that said, hey, you can upgrade your internet connection. I literally got a, a promotion for faster internet on the heels of them slowing my internet. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think this is a very human condition. You naturally assume I did, they did that to me on purpose. But actually, I think they're yeah. just incompetent. And, <laughs> you know, I, that, that's, that's perfect. It's a perfect internet access behavior, yeah. you know? Yeah. Perfect. I don't, I don't know. Well, I was trying anyway. to get some popcorn so that I could enjoy the rants. But all I could find is planters cheese balls. So if you guys, <laughs> oh boy. if you just want to continue, I'm just going to sit here and eat and some cheese eat, balls. Have some. <laughs> Crunchy. Yeah. God's perfect food. <laughs> really? I think you cheese could do balls? better. Or she. Oh, I, well, you could get cheesies from Canada, but... Utz, Utz makes a very nice uh, cheese ball as well. <laughs> I, I like that you're a connoisseur of this type of food. A review of cheese balls. <laughs> There's a long story behind it. I don't yeah. want to go into it. Um, I am excited. Or I don't know if I should be. Yeah. Because there's two things happening that are making uh, gaming PCs mm -hmm. uh, more approachable, more affordable. Uh, for one, NVIDIA has a overstock of uh, get yes, cards. Right. And I know the 4000's yeah. coming out uh, sometime in the next few weeks, but if you're looking for a 3080 or 3070, the prices have tumbled. You can <laughs> did, get did I already make this? You can get like a, a, you know, previously used by a cryptocurrency well, that guy. I it's, like, do. Yeah. it's like buying a 78 Samara, a Camaro that was beaten into the ground yeah. by a teenager. Like, yeah, or a yeah, police. It has high Yeah, get a police cruiser. You, you really want a, a Chevy Caprice? <laughs> yeah. Or a the, former rental car? Yeah, there you, you go. Know, yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was taken care of. No, but you can get them. 
can get them uh, new, I think, pretty good yeah, price. Yeah. And now AMD has announced, and I, I use a, a Ryzen uh, mm -hmm. for uh, my gaming machine, and it's with a 3070. It's fantastic. Uh, they've announced ask, their new 7000 series. Yeah. I want to ask you a question about this because I'm not a hardware guy. And I I had this discussion with Brad, and I, I, I feel like this is the lack of information here that both of us have. So... Intel infamously is adopting like a hybrid core architecture that is clearly influenced by ARM, right? So yeah, by Apple. Performance cores. Let's, let's, let's uh, yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, the performance cores and efficiency cores. Okay. Um, but before this, the way that Intel did things was they just had cores, right? And they were probably the equivalent of performance cores, but they were, it was kind of like the big block approach to performance, right? And so a couple of years ago, I guess four, four years ago, three, four years ago, they switched from like two core to four core on their mainstream chips, and it was kind of a, it was kind of a neat thing to do. They didn't really harm battery life, but they improved, you know, improved performance. But AMD has always kind of been over in the corner doing their own thing, and their Ryzen chipsets, recent generations, have been multi-core, but they don't talk about performance and efficiency cores, right? So these core, this new uh, desktop chipset, I think it goes up to yeah, up to sixteen cores, right? Thirty-two threads. Uh, very high, you know, um, speeds. But do, what do you, I mean, what's your take on this? Like, is this like the way the world, the way this part of the world, the microprocessor world, has evolved? Like, we've gone from like one big, you know, <laughs> like like a muscle car approach to like this way more efficient multi-core, multi-processing thing. I don't know. Like, I what what do you what do you? Well, it's great take for laptops. Like, I mean, there's no question yeah. about that. And that's where why it came from ARM originally because it was for phones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where battery life was really critical, and it's been great on uh, laptops. Actually, AMD has not traditionally been the greatest uh, laptop uh, processor yeah. out there. So I don't. And they are doing okay. uh, performance like and efficiency cores on these. Oh, they are now. Yeah. Okay. 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 They're also five nanometer chips, which right. is which something Intel so can't really. <laughs> Can't do. literally do, yeah. What's their smallest chips that they actually make? Is it 11? Uh, yeah, I think, lower, still 10, 11. I think there's still 11. I think there's still 10 or 11, yeah. Yeah. All right. um, so an, an Intel, uh, AMD, which has done a really good job of making power chips for gaming, right. uh, is claiming even more, like 30% increase in the performance. You so, know, Jay Miner, who is the architect behind the Atari 400-800 and the Amigas, is... A Probably a smiling somewhere in heaven. Yes, yeah, yes. is because he, in some ways, I know he didn't invent it. I don't mean it like that, but he created the first mass market computers that used what we think of as sort of multi-processing. You know, mm -hmm. separate chipsets to handle graphics and other operation music and so forth. Um, and I feel like this is the natural extension of that work. Like that, um, we have these things that are very efficient but also very powerful, multi-core in this case. Uh, like system on a chip that have little discrete parts, you know, for graphics and uh, general processing and so forth. It's, it's kind of, it's interesting. Like it's, what are we, 35, 40 years later? Um, we're living the, the, we're living the, the dream PC world. at this point. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Um, they're now up to 5.7 gigahertz peak frequency. Yeah, which is they're, they're, They do require uh, DDR5, which is more expensive. Yeah, which is really fast. <laughs> and <laughs> you know? there's one also. other drawback, which mm -hmm. is it bugs me a little bit. Thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> so if as long as they support USB 4, I, this is something I've been meaning to test. So I just got a, a Ryzen-based uh, ThinkPad in, and it is USB 4. But I suspect I can't plug this into a Thunderbolt dock. Oh, I'd be really curious, yeah. I am really curious. Yeah, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to do that soon. I'm curious. Because that's an Intel that. technology, so the mm -hmm. Intel PCs have it. And it can sometimes right. be an add-on on, a, on an AMD desktop. Yeah, but yeah. It's not native. But I, 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 right. So, I mean, even if it doesn't support Thunderbolt, like a dock, I mean, it should still be 40 gigabit speeds. Yeah, so you would have. I to like have USB four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's supposedly right. It's com it's it's compatible with Thunderbolt three, but I don't know if that means every USB yeah. four port will have it. So that's why I'm really curious. What you? Yeah, the laptop I have. See. There are two that have it, and one that does not. So one yeah. is USB three two Gen something. I don't remember the exact specification. Anyway, it's a good it's time to be probably. building a PC. That's that's I guess the. Yeah, Bottom all of a sudden, is. after it was the worst time in history to build a PC, <laughs> right. like about a year right. ago. Right. You know? Yep. 
<sighs> so, um, and you know, it's funny. There's, you go on Reddit. There's people who call themselves Team Red, which you are now in, by the way. I, well, because, oh, because AMD of is of our red. logo. Yeah, and now oh, you're, yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Right. No, that's okay. I like AMD. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> you're now <laughs> Team Red. Yeah. I mean, I like Intel too, but yeah. I, 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 AMD uh, has certainly had their issues over the years, but I feel like they've been kind of hitting it out of the park lately. And uh, it's interesting to me that Intel continues to stumble. Um, the other issue, by the way, I, I, I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole, but I have this between the spring and the summer have at, had in for review a pro, at least a dozen laptops that are 12th gen and then the one Ryzen. Um, every single one of them has had a performance problem of some kind. Mm -hmm. And it's the type of thing that kind of evens out over time. But in the beginning, it's really bad. And I, I've been stressed over the fact that I never see anyone reviewing laptops mentioning this. But I've seen it again and again and again. And I'm not, I was going to say, I'm not insane, but I guess you could make a case. But I, I definitely see what I'm seeing. And uh, I finally saw a reviewer mention that there's something about the 12th gen where they've gone to this hybrid core system where the delta between like the balanced power mode and the high performance mode is much greater than it was with the older generation chipsets. And that that might have something to do with what I'm seeing because they all come in balanced and it just, it might be a little too balanced or too, like or not balanced enough maybe. Um, or maybe Windows just needs to be re or uh, updated to support these hybrid chipsets better. Maybe it's just an inefficiency thing, although you have to think they knew this was coming. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I yeah. used to I used to root for AMD because I thought Intel needed the competition. Now I'm rooting for Intel again because AMD needs their lunch. The yeah, it's kind of it, it's yeah yeah. We it's, actually it's now a embarrassing. where where we really were in a Wintel world, what ten years ago? Uh, mm -hmm. We really now have Apple Silicon, other yeah. ARM versions from Qualcomm. We have right. AMD. And Intel, we really have some some strong contenders out there. That's, I think, very good for competition, oh, yeah. for innovation yep. and all of that. I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's also what Microsoft had been looking for for many, many years. Yeah, that's what they wanted, and, uh, for sure. They, they were begging uh, Intel in particular, but chipset makers in, in general, to make more efficient chipsets. You know, mm -hmm. Intel found it very easy to amp up the performance. And it's like, that's great, but most computers are mobile now. What we need is battery life, you know? Yep. And um, that's going to help. That's, I mean, whoever comes out on top or if, or if well, this is a three, Apple's whatever. Apple's amazing in the battery life right now. I mean, they just own it. They just own uh, it. I'd yeah, love to see, okay. I'd love to see a PC with, you know, 12, 13, 15 hours. Are there any? Nine. Nine would be No, good. there are. There are. There are. There are. No. <laughs> Notepad is notoriously power hungry. You know what? We, we've talked about this every time. And I, Paul is always like, what are you doing to your battery that you can't get more than eight hours? And I send him my battery report and he's like, okay, I don't know what you're doing, but you're, you're right. You're getting eight hours of battery. Are you getting seven or I, six? I, I actually, <laughs> I'm not going to name names here, but I got a complaint from a PC maker because I reported that their battery life was terrible. And I said, well, this is not what we're seeing in our labs. And I said, I'm not using it in your lab. I'm using it in the real world. And <laughs> this is what I'm seeing. I was surprised by how bad it was as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, does, win well, does Windows have to be, Windows needs to, part of this is, is Microsoft really taking advantage of these efficiency cores, right? This is what I'm wondering. See, I don't know how much, I, I, I can't I say that I remember them ever discussing this explicitly, but they must be doing it. They have I, if, to be smart about it. They have to say, oh, right, no, we're going to put right. this on the efficiency core. This is kind of why I asked about the AMD thing, because AMD had gone multi-core a long time ago. They've been doing, you know, by, by multi-core, I mean more than four cores on mainstream chipsets. Um, Intel now, I don't know the exact numbers, but depending on what you're looking at, core i3 through core i9, obviously they have two to four probably performance cores and four to eight or more efficiency cores. I mean, this changes things. I mean, Windows has to be tailored for this for it to make sense. It has to be, right? Like, I wonder if I was, I, I also wonder if, if future enhancements to Windows that take better advantage of this architecture will be, well, of course they will be. They'll be restricted to Windows 11 as yet another way 12. to 
yeah, or it's right. Or some feature. Exactly. Just to, to, re, to kind of force people to upgrade, um, yep. to get the, the new stuff. That would be exciting if you said, you know what, if you upgrade to Windows 12, you'll actually finally get good battery life. Well, <laughs> I, that's probably it. not how they would market it. Um, no, <laughs> but, probably yeah. not. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if that were really the case, right, yeah. Right, right. I, I, it depends. I have a, I, I have a, the latest generation Snapdragon is in the uh, ThinkPad X13s, which I have in now. Mm -hmm. So supposedly the battery life is in the, you know, near 20 hours or whatever. Um, I doubt it, sure. you know, but, but, you know, we'll <laughs> see. I will say, I mean, compared to the previous gen, um, there is a, a noticeable uh, performance improvement. However, it's still an ARM chip and there's still the right. noticeable ARMness, you know, the ARM issues yeah. that you still have from time to time. But, you know, it's, it's, it's creeping. Uh, it's creeping upwards for sure. Mm -hmm. I need you to tell me the right laptop to buy because I think my Surface Laptop 3 is on its last leg. Oh, should she get that new one you just reviewed, Paul? The, <sighs> the, the one that folds in half from Asus? No. That looks kind of <laughs> hokey, right? Like, that looks like a weird hokey. It looks kind of cool. A 17 There's a, um, think, uh, we, Lenovo it, sells a ThinkPad that looks like that as There's well. There's is 13 um, inches. This one is 17 inches. No. Okay, wait a, wait, no. Wait a day But no, it folds in half, <laughs> so, and you put the keyboard in the bottom half, and then it's just like a 13 inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can not, be not a the 17 okay. inch. They're not the only ones who are doing that, by the way. They How just showed this at EFA. around? Yeah, it just, just was announced. Yeah. No, you don't want a folding screen. Uh, like no. That. It's thirty five hundred dollars. So on a lap, I know, yeah. crazy. Um, oh boy, yeah. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I guess the way I would say this is, generally speaking, eleventh gen products are more reliable, get slightly better battery life than what I'm seeing with twelfth gen so far. Yeah, but okay. the twelfth gen are newer. And well, I thought twelfth gen was supposed to be better battery life. Yes. Maybe it'll something. learn. Maybe it has to learn you, like not to be all. You know, you know, actually, all right, this, you know what? It, all right, here's the issue. So here's <laughs> this is I, again. I can only. I'm not like I'm not a hardware guy, and I know yeah. someone is going to come away with and say, "Paul, you you have no idea what you're talking." I about. get good based, results on this 15 inch uh, Dell. Really good. So do you? Okay, but and it's 12 gen. I five. I five. I five H P U. We talked about this. It's an H. I know, my but friend, it's, it's an, an H. H. Okay. All right. So <laughs> that's the most part. All right. So it's a good here's, here's one. My, it's not one of them crappy gold pentiums. Right. Here's my. <laughs> this is just me not being a hardware guy, but this is my yeah. observation. Yeah. In previous generation chips, U series, which stood for Ultrabook, right, was mm -hmm. basically what the chips that you saw in everything. It was in everything. Yep. It doesn't matter what. It, very occasionally, you would see H series, but. It was, you, you was everywhere. And when you go forward to 12th gen, all of a sudden, there's this new skew in the middle called P, which is 28 watts, mm -hmm. which now is on most, everything. It's on Ultrabooks. It's on, it's, it's the one, I, like I said, I had uh, 12 in. I, I bet 10 of them are P series and two are U series. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's overwhelmingly P series. And the only thing I can think of is, well, first of all, you sacrifice a little bit in battery life for sure. But I wonder if this hybrid core thing has caused U-series to not quite be as good because I don't think the U-series chips we're seeing this year are as good as the U-series chips we saw last year with 11 Gen. Mm -hmm. I just don't think mm -hmm. they're as good. Hmm. Um, I, I'm very happy with this. Life. It's a 12500H. Yeah. Right. Um, and Do you have uh, discrete graphics or uh, integrated nope, graphics? Nope, integrated you know, yep. I got I, on your recommendation. I got kind of like a <laughs> what a normal person would. I get. love the implicit. It's I'm you. to blame. That it's it your was, fault. Um, so, <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Um, I that, think you were no, right. That is what I, I. That's what system. I would choose. And I. Yeah. And I. Uh, this is a XPS 15, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I like this form factor a lot. I, I mm -hmm. you know, you don't have like the numpad stuff, which no, I no, no. Can't and you stand. could get. You could get obviously, Mary Jo. You don't need the 15. You can get the, the whatever the 13. Right. Yeah. yeah, those are nice. I those like nice. the XPSs. And I, I have yeah. to say... I've I, never had one. But. I don't want to go out on a limb and have you be mad at me, but I feel like this is I'm eight just, or nine hour battery life easy on the 15. Hmm. What I would like... So it's, I, uh, I wrote about this a little while ago too. It's weird to me. I just said, you know, most people don't use tablets and pens and stuff, but it is weird how often premium PCs in particular are like hybrid uh, convertible mm -hmm. PCs. Yeah. Uh, HP Spectre X360 is a good version or a good example. The uh, Anything with the name Yoga in it, like the X1 Carbon Yoga or X1, sorry, ThinkPad right. X1 Yoga. Um, I For myself, I actually prefer just a traditional laptop form factor. Same. Yeah. Um, the ThinkPad... 
ThinkPad, I think, is switching, not this year for everything, but probably next year to better keyboards, better form factor. I think that there's going to be a big shift happening at, mm. with ThinkPad, which is I, very interesting. I wish Mary Jo could try a framework because it's 3-2. Uh, yeah. I really like the framework. They have 12th gen now. Yeah, um, I don't know. Keyboards, I think, are very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and the nice thing is Mary Jo, it's upgradable. So yeah. right. they make motherboards, you know, uh, I could upgrade my 11th gen mm -hmm. Intel now to a 12th gen mm -hmm. and presumably mm -hmm. I'll be very curious. I bet you they do an AMD. Mm -hmm. You gotta, Mary Jo, you gotta, so what you should do is, first of all, you need, you should visit here. We've been talking about this for a while anyway, but, I know. and yeah. while I have a million laptops in <laughs> and look at them all. <laughs> Because I it's should. hard to go and see these things, yeah. you know, in a store. Yeah. Um, That's the drawback in the totally framework. Should. No, there's no, you nowhere can't to go to any it. store. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's nowhere to go yeah. to like no. check out laptops. No. And you know, I, I, like I won't get another Surface after this one, just because this isn't yeah. that old, right? This is three years old. Now my motherboard's flickering again and doing weird shut off <laughs> things, and I'm just Great. like, uh, and this is the motherboard I replaced, this is right? So I'm like, three, it's right? not long this... for this world. Surface laptop three and introduced is it in Intel? 2019. Intel. Intel yeah. or AMD? Okay. Intel. Intel. Yeah. Yeah. I know the AMD that year was on, like, was previous gen and was kind right. of underpowered. No, this was the Intel one. Um, yeah. I'm just disappointed how I, this I, went. <laughs> I prefer HP keyboards personally. Uh, yeah. Although I the like latest. HP a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. No, because we some think there's going to be a sur in. like we think there's going to be a Surface launch this fall, right? Like every mm -hmm. fall they have mm -hmm. a launch. But I'm just like, yeah, I'm just not. Waiting around, if, even if there's a laptop five, like I'm very gun shy on them now. I think they would have to be at whatever the Surface event is. That has to be part of it. A laptop five, they're over. I just, I'm just, I'm worried after the, what happened with the three about going with the Surface. Yeah. I hate to admit that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if there was something perfect, I would recommend it to everybody. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I, I know, no, and everybody has different needs. Like for me, the I like biggest the, needs are portability and battery. Those are my two things. Yeah, I do like the spec. I, I, I will say, um, I had had a problem, like I said, with battery life on one computer. And when we yeah. flew to Mexico the last time, I used the Spectre X360 the entire flight. Mm -hmm. And when the guy said you got to put away the laptops, I looked and I was like fifty four percent battery life. I'm like that's pretty wow. good. Like that's pretty good. Wow. That is good. And uh, yeah, and I was online and I was writing and I had the thing yeah. going the whole time. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty good. It's a convertible, which I don't care for personally, but yeah. I just use it like a laptop. I mean, I mm -hmm. it's a it yeah. is a great laptop. Um, yeah, I don't know. You you gave me one when my Surface was in the shop the last mm -hmm. time. Remember, you gave mm -hmm. me an HP AMD, and it was uh, AMD. Yeah, yeah. I like it. It was I probably like an Envy. I think it was an uh, Envy. I think it was an Envy. I think it was an Envy. Yeah. yeah, I liked it, yeah. I, and I still use yeah. that. Like when I'm on the road and stuff, I use that. I just got. I have three 16-inch laptops, and now one's an HP NV 16 I haven't written about yet. Um, I it's really so like big. this form factor. It's gigantic. too big, yeah. <laughs> I know, but I want to use it on a, you know what I mean? I, I like, the, I like yeah. the screen size. It's good. Yeah. For me, 13 is okay. Yeah. Um, I can get by with it. Yeah. Notepad on the 3.32 screen <laughs> of the framework would look so would be good. Ideal. It would oh look my God. Right? Emacs looks great. So imagine how good <laughs> Notepad would look. And with that, I'm putting away the cheese balls. <laughs> Notepad is probably, it's like a single core application. It probably just pegs your CPU and yeah. <laughs> yeah, leaves that it must at that. Be it. it that doesn't must need be to it. peg it, it's just sitting there waiting for Mary Jo to type. Right. It it's is. an eternity between keystrokes from their point of view. I think TweetDeck probably does a number on my battery. For one it thing. might. The yeah. live scrolling might, yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, that could that could well be it. I doubt Twitter optimizes it in any way. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and browsers are notoriously uh, power hungry, really. Yeah. And what right. browser do you use? Edge. Oh, I think Edge is the new Bing. Yeah, the new pig. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think actually Edge was supposed to be very lightweight. I don't know if I know. it still is. Right. So I, I launched Notepad and it didn't impact my CPU or RAM at all. No, it's just all. sitting there most of the time. It shouldn't <laughs> it do anything. Shouldn't, right? It right. shouldn't. No, I know. I, all right. I, I know it shouldn't. I'm just. And then you type and it goes up two percent. Actually, you type yeah. and it goes up for, up to four percent. Ooh. That's it. Ooh. That's interesting. Um, I wonder. You know what I could do for you? I. I mean, I. I could try on this. I could just set it up when I go home today 
with TweetDeck in the background. Unplug it. TweetDeck in the background. Mm -hmm. Notepad open. Um, I, sh I need to get some typing thing, and right. just let it and just let it run. Just and let it, it sit there, right? Yeah. Yep. I bet you, if just Notepad was running, I wouldn't need to type keystrokes. They're not going to use a whole lot of juice. Right. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll leave that. I, now I don't know how I would okay. know when it died, how long it went. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it'll just be a you need an a, alarm. a liquid pile of sludge in the corner. <laughs> yeah. May, if I start the uh, <laughs> clock timer, if I start the stopwatch. Hmm. And then when I reopen it after it dies, it might show the last time. Uh, maybe. Yeah. No, I'll try that. <laughs> like 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 when there's a nuclear accident and the clocks. Yeah, all yeah. Everything died at ten o'clock at night. Yeah, <laughs> they're all the all the clocks in Chernobyl are at the sure. same time. Yeah, that's it. It's, right. Yeah. Uh, we shouldn't joke about nuclear accidents these days. I was going to say no. it's going to be that way sensitive. again soon if they're yeah. not careful. Yeah, yeah. a little sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft three sixer Fiverr. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> Boy, I... Paul sounds so excited. He sounds super well, excited. <laughs> so, all right, so I'll, I'll, I'll present you with a, a sentence and then my initial reaction, which is Microsoft Outlook is picking up Microsoft to do integration. And then my reaction to that is it does, doesn't it already have Microsoft yeah. to do integration? <sighs> there is a tasks component yeah. in Outlook and it, it must tie into Microsoft to do, but I guess they're replacing tasks with to do. So is that um, right? Remember Microsoft had and still has like a million different ways to do your own to-do list. Like tasks is yep. one, to do is one. They used to have wonder lists. Like there's just so mm -hmm. many different products. OneNote, right? Like you could use yep. any of these yep. things to be your task management type product. So um, I would love them to go public and just sit down and explain this to everyone. But I know just from people talking to me about this, that this whole meta OS thing that they're doing, um, <laughs> the idea of this thing is to bring a common set of elements to Teams and to Outlook and to Edge, right? So what they're trying to do is take things like tasks, lists, files, whiteboard, planner, stream, and make all of these things available on all three of those hubs, Outlook, Edge, mm. and Teams. So this is okay. what they're trying to do. This is the Uber goal. They have never said this publicly that I know of, right? This, right. I think a lot of people would benefit from understanding what are you guys doing? Why are you bringing Outlook to, why are you bringing, you know, tasks to Outlook? Why are you bringing to-do to Outlook? Why are you bringing planner to Outlook? Like, what's going on here? I think that, I think they should just one day have, have Jared Spataro or someone mm -hmm. stand on a stage and say, you know, it's probably been confusing to you all what we've been doing. This is what we're doing. And they don't even have to use meta OS as a word, but if they just explained right. that and the idea that People use different things as their hub. Like not everyone lives in Teams. Not everyone lives in Outlook, right? They're trying to just be um, versatile, I feel like, and give people options. I feel like Microsoft already always gives too many options, but I right. feel like the Office team is trying to streamline those and make it more consistent across these hubs. That's what I think is happening. Well, actually, you, you may be on to an implicit acknowledgement of strategy, which is that if any service <laughs> appears on all three of those things, it is yeah. the way forward, right? Yes, so in, right. in some ways, you could be making the argument here that because to do explicitly is now being added to Outlook, it is the tasks functionality of the future. It is, yes. Right? Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. seems that way. That's my guess about what's happening. Yeah, okay. Yep. But then the biggest story of the day. I'm glad you <laughs> Thank you. Until now. I don't know why this wasn't the top story, frankly. But it should have been. What? Really. What? No, I'm excited. <laughs> Jensen Harris. Who cares about that guy? <laughs> what about Kazila going away? What okay, is Ka what? Guys. Who? Kazila? <laughs> exactly. Thank is that you. From That's the movie Avatar. Response. It's no, it nothing was in to the do Lion with King. Avatar. <laughs> nothing to do with Lion King or Vuvuzelas. None it's of those things. It's the circle of life. <laughs> it's the Kazila of life. <laughs> so in. In 2018, Microsoft launched this service. It's a large group messaging service called Kazila in India. It oh. started in India. Oh, okay. Right. So it's not um, for it's not for the U.S. It's kind of like it was kind of like a WhatsApp competitor, like kind of right. designed like that. And somebody in the office team saw this and said, "You know, it'd be cool. We should just integrate this into Microsoft 365, right? Like, give people this thing if they want to use it. Let them use it." 
So once they did that, and, um, I had so many people coming to me saying, so wait, am I supposed to use Kazila now or am I supposed to use Teams chat? Like what? I'm confused. Again, Microsoft giving too many options um, as they <laughs> want to do. <laughs> then yep. suddenly uh, they are now killing Kazila. So, you know, killed by Google. We have killed by Microsoft also. Mm. And planning to retire Kazila as of August 31st, 2023. Until then, so you get a year from today, uh, you can keep using it, but after that, that's it. Like, it's going away. <laughs> and their explanation is, you know why we're getting rid of it? Because it overlaps with Teams. Yes, thank you. We we knew that like three years ago, four years ago. But now right. it feels like somebody in the office team is like looking at things and going, why do we have this? Like we have Teams, right? Um, it also could be that they're killing this product because as we've heard, Microsoft is doing a lot of belt tightening right now in the Windows and the Office team. So they may just be looking at things like, do a lot of people use this, yes or no? No, okay, let's get rid of it and get rid of the team and save some money. That could also be what's happening, yeah. right? This shows how hard it is to um, create an But yeah, they, they were very low key about killing it off after kind of celebrating that they had brought it up through the Microsoft Grudge incubation It was a garage thing, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shows yeah. how hard it is it's to... It's going away. Um, so if you're a Kazila user, they want you to go to Teams instead. Fair enough. No big, no, no big surprise, as somebody said to me, but still an acknowledgement that... If you're an anything user, they want you to go to Teams Kazala. instead, right? Right. No matter right. what you use, go to Teams. <laughs> go to Teams. Yes, pretty much. What were you going to say, yeah. Leo? It's, just, uh, the, sure. it's a problem if you're a global company naming products. It is, right. yeah. Because I think... Uh, the name is a show is a stopper in the U.S. It's just in English. It's not, <laughs> People well, are like what? Kazila. <laughs> should have called know. it Kazam and brought in um, what's his name Shaquille O'Neal. But it was intended for India. There's no yeah, one. India has more languages than almost any country in the world. Yeah. Maybe it does. Mm -hmm. So there's no one word. You know, you don't want to do a Hindi word. Because yeah. in the Marathi people won't use it. So what you do something that's mm -hmm. kind of nonsensy but sounds. Like it's I Indian. I don't know. Yeah. Must no, and then you have hard. to make sure no one else owns the <laughs> trademark also. Right. right? <laughs> and the website and all of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it must be very hard uh, yeah. to be, I think, just to be a global corporation in general these yep. days. Yeah. You're always stuck walking out of eggshells. You're, yeah. You're going to insult someone somewhere <laughs> with your Nova car. <laughs> right. Or whatever. I mean, you know, if you're a big, you know, if you big build nuclear plants, it doesn't really matter what your name is. <laughs> you can work any. You can be a global concern. That's easy. Um, yeah. You could be international paper company yeah. and be international. But if you're software, mm -hmm. right. that's it's very different. Now look at the yeah. names of startups these days. Like I oh, laugh yeah. so many times when I see startup names. I'm like, what? Well, we're used <laughs> to Google now, but yeah. that was a terrible name. I know people hated that. Right? Google, iPad. People like flipped out. When oh, I hated Apple iPad. Did iPad. I did. We really yep. mocked it. Yep. But I also yep. knew at yep. the time you're going to get used to it. Yeah. Because yep. you get used to everything except Kazila. I'm never, never. Gonna <laughs> get except Kazila. <laughs> never going to get used. We to hardly Kazila. knew you. Yeah, didn't get a chance. You'll be right there ahead of Kin in the book of Microsoft <laughs> killed projects. <laughs> Ken was a good name, though. Mm -hmm. Ken was a good name. Ken probably worked well world. in a lot of languages, actually. <laughs> it was a good yeah. product. Got screwed by Verizon. Cute. How long before Microsoft makes a, a, a product called Ken? I know, because they love to <laughs> yeah, use exactly. code names sure. and names. They yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Well, fact, I think they... Because <laughs> Xyla might still be here if they'd called it Ken. Right. Or maybe something they else will show up, they, like... Viva Kazila. Viva Kazila. Viva Kazila. I think Viva, the Viva keep Groove adding these is modules. more likely. Like, yeah, Kazila. Why not? Uh, okay. Let's talk about the cloud, shall we? Okay. Why not? Uh, <laughs> no. Paul. Paul. Oh. Can you feign interest of some kind? Just pretend. No, this is a big deal because um, it's kind of surprising Microsoft hadn't had this already, but uh, they didn't have ARM-based VMs in Azure until now. Right. It's, you know, AWS had Gravitron for like years, and then Google just announced that they were going to have ARM-based VMs in the Google Cloud. But Microsoft hadn't said anything until this April when they announced the preview of ARM's 
uh, ARM support in Azure VMs. And then this, as of tomorrow, September 1st, it'll be generally available. So the way they're doing this is kind of interesting. They're, they partner with Ampere. Um, it's a company that makes ARM-based server chips. And so Microsoft started working with them to do ARM-based VMs for Azure. Um, what else do you need to know? All the a, well, a lot a lot of Linux flavors are available. Yeah, I think that's the big uh, the big thing because Ubuntu yeah. Canonical came out with an announcement. I thought it was a you Ubuntu it was theirs, Microsoft right? partnership. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no, no. It's like every major Linux. Um, yeah, see if we can find the list. Uh, da, 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 Ubuntu, da, da. Red Hat, Enterprise yep. Linux, who say CentOS and Debian. Nice coming soon. Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. Rocky. I am positive those don't even exist. No, those are hilarious names. <laughs> I'm making those names up just to see if you understand. Yep, exactly. <laughs> to see if anyone's like, paying attention. Is anyone going to type those words? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Alma, you know, Alma uh, Linux. We're all. Also, if you're not a Linux fan, I know there may be some people who are not. This is Windows mm -hmm. Weekly. Um, you can run a preview of Windows 11 Professional and Enterprise on these ARM VMs as well. Yep. So, yeah. It was time. Um, a lot of people have been saying, what is Microsoft going to do with ARM in the data center? Um, they've got Windows r Server running on ARM, but only for internal use, and they won't sell it to customers. So the way they're going at this is v ARM, ARM VMs. Oh, we've got somebody in the Discord. All my user here. Okay, it exists. It, it's not made up. <laughs> Thank you, Newman. Uh, <laughs> Newman. Um, Newman. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the one takeaway people should have is if you haven't been noticing, Microsoft is really going all out to show that they're doing stuff with ARM. After years of working on Windows on ARM and kind of letting it atrophy, they're back. And everything they're doing now is like bringing Visual Studio to ARM, a native version, you know, doing this Volterra desktop PC thing that they showed at Build based on ARM. Everything is ARM, ARM, ARM. And I think at Ignite, I'm expecting to hear a lot more stuff about Windows and ARM. Um, you know, they had to. Apple did it. Now everybody's going to Microsoft and saying, so, hey, Apple's doing this. What are you guys doing? And they, ha they need an answer. Is there any so. word? Remember this speculation that Qualcomm had an exclusive on uh, WOA? Yep. Is there yeah, any word about that? We don't know. We don't know, we don't we know, know if that's know. true. I would love to know about this. But, but Windows and ARM is still not official. Available as an ISO or supported right. on Apple. Right. Not su officially supported. And the right. thesis right. was, that's oh, true. that's probably because Qualcomm had an exclusivity deal. Though we don't know that. But we don't know. Yeah. We don't know that for sure. But it's, it's one of those things that makes sense, so it must be true. And God knows that's never gotten <laughs> anyone in trouble. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, the source of that rumor was Rich Woods, right. who has a lot of good stuff on yeah. Qualcomm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I feel very... But I, I think feel, even I if you went back... He also yeah, said but, it was expiring. That's why he, he knew about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it apparently yeah. did not, so... Mm -hmm. Right. Or they extended it and didn't tell anybody because right. they certainly exactly. haven't been open about this partnership. Oh, it's per a se. secret. Other it's than probably yeah. collusion. It's probably an, an antitrust trigger. <laughs> <laughs> they're so far If only we could find someone who cared. Like, you're cute. Just keep doing what you're doing. No one cares. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, no, the plan originally was it was going to start with Qualcomm and move to other right. ARM chipsets, and that's never happened. And yeah. some of those companies either went out of business or just stopped working on that project, right? I Well, I will tell you what we need less than the current architecture is a different bunch of different versions of that chipset that don't yeah. work well with PCs, right? <laughs> right. So exactly. I think what... It's possible that, uh, I think the speculation was NVIDIA's acquisition of Nuvia, which is going to result in a new style of ARM chips or PCs, mm -hmm. might be what is keeping them on Qualcomm. Oh, interesting. Um, that, yeah. The, yeah. the bet is like mm -hmm. this will work out uh, well, oh, yeah, hopefully. Maybe. Yeah. And there's it, there's no incentive for them to work with Apple Silicon. They don't they don't really care about that. Oh no, Microsoft would love to do that. I don't think Apple cares. Apple is the problem. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. yeah, I don't. They think made. Apple. I mean, you know, they went to a lot of effort to do boot camp, and they had yep. uh, Apple specific drivers for Windows. I mean, that was a significant mm -hmm. effort back in the day. Yeah. Yep, it was necessary back in the day. I mean, I, I feel like well, has the world you changed see... that much? Yeah, I think it has. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't think that running a Windows app locally on a Mac is a huge deal anymore beyond special use cases like developers who obviously have special, mm -hmm. you know, those needs or um, 
like help desk personnel, that kind of thing. But, you know, general office workers where it's like, no, you have to run the wind, this Windows app and it has to be on your computer. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Obviously it does, but I don't think it's a mainstream issue anymore. I don't think so. That's just, I, we can all speculate, I guess. That's your thought. Can. Yeah, it's good to have a thought. <laughs> That's my thought. I'm sticking with it. I don't care what you say. I'm not changing my mind. Yeah. Let's uh, move right along to the uh, EU-based mm -hmm. cloud licensing issues uh, with the... Uh, was it? Is it about data storage, where it's stored? No, this, no. Is, this is a very um, complicated matter. Oh. <laughs> can, I, can I summarize so, this one really quick? And Go then ahead. you can completely Give it a whirl. Because I know Give it a whirl. you're going to love this. Yep. Three years ago, yes. three short years ago, yes. Microsoft changed the licensing for Windows and Office running on competing clouds yep. and to make it more onerous and expensive. And partners and customers complained to the EU. Uh -huh. The EU actually inquired with Microsoft to see what was going on. Microsoft came up publicly and said, you're right. We're so sorry. This we didn't mean for this bad effect to happen. Oh, I remember that. We're gonna fix. We're <laughs> gonna fix it. I remember that. Yeah. And they move really quickly, and they fixed it, and everything's fine now. Okay. Does that sound about right? Right. Um, no. It's not what happened, huh? <laughs> Tell me if you have any uh, issues with that, that version sentence. of the story. <laughs> Good up until right. that last sentence. Okay. So yes, all of that happened. Microsoft changed the hosting rules to make it more expensive to run their software on competing clouds. So if you're a Microsoft right. fan, you're like, yeah, of course. They're trying to give themselves a leg up so that people mm -hmm. are running on Azure, right? Why not? Right. All's fair in business and competition. Well, you know who didn't like it? AWS and Google. So they got their partners and customers to complain to the EU. And right. then the EU kind of said to Microsoft, hey, hey, what's going on? Then Microsoft came out with the European cloud principles. Like, we're the good guys. We're so sorry, <laughs> I love, Paul said. We I love the mean name, to do too. This. European we didn't mean cloud to do that. principles. So this week, they put, shared the set of things that they're going to be changing. And the things that they're changing are going to help Microsoft cloud solution provider partners. So if you're a smaller mm -hmm. hoster or an outsourcer, you love what Microsoft just did. You're like, yes, they just gave me right. all these new ways of licensing things with customers. It's going to be awesome. And if you're AWS and Google and Alibaba, you're like, wait a minute, nothing changed. We're excluded right. from all of these new concessions that they just made. We're called listed providers. And they said, this is all good for everyone except these listed providers. So, um, yeah, they help customers who don't want to run Microsoft software on Google or on AWS or Alibaba. But if you do want to run it on that, they didn't change anything and you're still going to be paying more to run them on competitive clouds. But here's why this is genius on Microsoft's part. Because <laughs> they know they're dealing with the EU and they know right. how the EU works and how they think. Yep. So the first thing they did was they took three years to address this problem. They're, they're operating on EU time. Brilliant. Yep. Really smart. It, three years went by. <laughs> like, seriously. It's incredible. <laughs> but the other thing they did was, you know, I know this is a general, this is just a general statement. If there's an antitrust uh, fan in the uh, Discord, don't freak out at this. But in general, antitrust in the United States is focused on consumers and antitrust in the EU is focused on competition. Right. Primarily with European competition, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think right. Google or, or the EU cares if Microsoft is being mean to Google or a a Amazon. Those are, <laughs> United, those are U.S. superpowers. All they care about are these EU small guys. So they're like, yeah, we'll fix it for that. We'll take three years yeah. to fix it, and then we'll fix it for your stupid little special use case that no one else cares about. And the EU is probably going to be like, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. And that's probably going to be the end of it. It'll I, take I, three more years, right? Three more yeah. years will go by. <laughs> yep. That's cra it's yeah. crazy. Like, it's it's yeah. crazy how they solved this problem. Yeah. You know what? They're that's, good. They're good. They they know yeah. how to work this, right? I mean, yep. there are... I'm not going to say there are no good things in here. If you're somebody who, who runs software in a hosted manner on other cloud infrastructures, um, you should mm -hmm. check out what they changed. They've got some new things they call flexible virtualization benefits. It's going to help you if you're a soft software assurance customer, unless you're running on AWS, Google, or Alibaba. And there's a new uh, provision in here. If you're somebody who has been wanting to run Windows 10 or 11 uh, in a hosted manner, they made a concession where you don't need a VDA add-on license anymore. So that could save you some money. Um, there's a new way of Windows Server virtual core licensing. There's a whole bunch of things. So you should check it out. But just remember, if you're trying to think 
if you're thinking that this is going to help you run Microsoft software on AWS or Google or Alibaba, you are wrong. It will not help I you like, or save uh, you any money. The other thing I hope people <laughs> noticed during your description of this is Mary Jo skimmed right over the top of the Microsoft licensing elephant and, and just yes. mentioned the, the smallest little slice of this terrible monstrosity. I did. And it already is horrible. And the, yeah. the notion that Microsoft improved licensing in Europe by making it more complicated, frankly, <laughs> frankly because <laughs> this thing you thought couldn't be more complicated it, it is, in fact, now more complicated. So, oh, man. Uh, I, I'm friends with, with the guys at Directions on Microsoft, mm -hmm. who I, I do a podcast with them um, about, and we talk about licensing a lot, right? That's their yeah, special. That's all they think about. That's their whole. So yeah. I sent them the link to this and you should have seen the answers that came back, like charts and like graphs, mm -hmm. things crossed out, things encircled and being Nerds. like, make sure you mention this. Nerds. Da -da -da. So <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, there's no way I could like put all the things How you just told me in How are they not insane story. people, all of them? <laughs> they should all be in a rubber room wearing Such those. Such a weird thing. We specialize, well, we specialize in licensing. I guess it's a good business. Oh, oh man, people need help, yeah. right? People need yep. help. <laughs> just, I wouldn't want to do that to myself. No, no I know. It's a lot. It, yeah, it's, it's awful. Yeah. Nerds. Yeah. Nerds. <laughs> nerds. Licensing nerds. The Lic best kind of the nerds. The worst, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to Ubuntu, I guess, uh, if yeah. we must. What's going on? I know. Oh, yeah. What's going on here? It's sneaking yeah, so in all over. this wasn't so good. Uh, there's a release of Ubuntu called Bionic Beaver. Who knew? Um, I knew. <laughs> One of my Version favorites. 1804 yeah. of It's old. Ubuntu. That's old. Yeah. Oh, it's no, old. Okay. Yeah, very okay. old. Yeah. Um, so some people were running this in their VMs on Azure. They had an auto update setting set, so it automatically updated to this. And unfortunately, when it did, it fa we found out, and, Ubu and uh, Canonical found out, that there was a DNS issue in, in Bionic Beaver. And so it got propagated to VMs running uh, that Ubuntu release in Azure. And it made a giant cascading outage happen for people who are using Ubuntu on Azure. Nice. <laughs> right. So a lot of services went down. Like a uh, Azure Kubernetes service went down. The container app service went down. Um, yeah, this started two days ago, by the way. This start, sorry, one day ago. Yesterday, August 30th, really early in the morning it started. And at, when I woke up this morning, still going on. They Like Ubuntu had fixed it. Microsoft had told people reboot your VMs. And it's been kind of a big mess. So <laughs> I just checked the Azure page. They, it looks like they fixed it. But um, you might want to go to the Azure status page if you do this and uh, look at the remediation suggestions and such. <laughs> You know, if I'm not mistaken, this new Ubuntu and whatever else Linux on ARM is going live tomorrow. So you might want to stay tuned to that page uh, <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, good point. You know, uh, see how that goes. Yeah. yeah. I think that happens tomorrow. I think it's September 1. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Yep. Yeah. And then the last thing, while well, we're talking about Azure mm. Kubernetes service, because of course we are, it's the cloud segment. <laughs> Um, I like that you put AKS in there like anyone would know what that meant. Like anyone would know. AKS, you know, Azure <laughs> Kubernetes Service. Yeah. Um, so every every year for the past 10 years, you guys know I'm very persistent. This is one of the reasons I drive Microsoft crazy. I ask them the same question <laughs> multiple years just to check in. So about 10 years ago, I started asking Microsoft when they were going to move Office 365 to Azure because it doesn't run on Azure. Parts of it run on oh. Azure like Teams does. And um, they said their goal was to get all of Microsoft 365 and Office 365 to host on Azure. You know when we joke about hard computer science problem? This <laughs> is a hard computer science problem, right? This is a very hard computer science problem. So what they're doing is they're using AKS to kind of lift and shift a lot of Microsoft 365, uh, especially the exchange part of it, over to Azure. Uh, I, when I asked them this week, how's it going, guys? Like, it's been 10 years. Like, how, how's it going? They're like, yeah, we're still not done. Um, we're still a work in progress, but we're getting there. Like, AKS is really helping us a lot. Um, and Microsoft even put out a case study that I linked to in an article I have if you want to read it about how they're using AKS to try to bring more of Microsoft 365 over to Azure. Do they um, ever talk about what the rest of Microsoft 365 is running on? Is it yes. Windows well, servers don't. in a data center? Or yes. Yeah. It's so they uh, they launched, I believe they launched Office 365 before 
they had built Azure or Azure was very new, right? And so yeah. what they had to do was build their own set of servers in their own data centers with their own cloud infrastructure that was not Azure to host this. And the name of what wow. hosts this is Autopilot. Um, so if you ever hear about Autopilot, in, there's two Autopilots. There's the Windows Autopilot, right. which is for provisioning and configuring systems. And then there's this other Autopilot, which Microsoft built to host its own um, backend services before Azure was really a robust uh, backend infrastructure. Hmm. So yeah, it's running. So there's a lot of Microsoft things like Bing and Microsoft 365, Office 365, some of Xbox also that runs on these bare metal servers in Microsoft data centers and not on Azure. Oh, at least it's yep. not free BSD, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I would, I would go for that. If I could get free BSD to run on something, yeah. I would, I would do it. <laughs> Even if it's the cloud. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. I got excited about this next story because I thought, oh, maybe finally that uh, one Surface that runs on ARM that I really like, there'll be an Intel version so I can actually use it. Well, actually, there there is. Um, Surface? So, so the story is that Surface Pro and Surface Pro X brands may be consolidated. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember the exact year this happened, but probably when... I'm just going to guess. I might be wrong about this, but it, probably the year that Microsoft came out with Surface Pro 7, they also came out with Surface Pro X or 10 X. or whatever, mm -hmm. which was the ARM version. Um, and it had a new design. It was thinner, obviously, fanless, smaller bezels. Um, I thought it was really it cool have, looking. I liked it. Key, little pencil holder? Yeah, it was holder, built into the keyboard pen. sort yep, of thing. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But, but I didn't um, want a WOA Surface. Right. So actually, the Windows, I'm uh, sorry, Surface Pro 8, which is now, I guess, a year old, I don't know, a year and a half old, has this design, right? So they actually did switch oh. this design for Intel. Um, there's a second gen version of the uh, Surface Pro X as well, and then Surface Pro 8. And Surface Pro 8 has the same keyboard with the pen integrated, you know, into the keyboard where it charges while it's sitting there so you don't lose it, which is really nice. Oh. Uh, it does have it does have that design. So they they actually did kind of switch that design. So I got the theory here. I think this is just really about branding, right? So that with yeah. the, there'll be something they'll probably call Surface Pro, well, nine, I guess. And instead of using in, you know, Intel and AMD SKUs like we have on Surface Laptop, there'll be Intel and ARM versions of it. Um, and it will be the yeah. same body, the same nice. branding, you know, that kind of thing. I... Mm, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's it, it's it, it, it was confusing that they had two different products. Yeah, I didn't really uh, ever realize the eight is the same. To be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a nice device, actually. Um, the yeah, Intel it looks version. cool. I'm glad I didn't know yeah. about it, or I might have bought it by accident. <laughs> I feel, I feel um, like this is a, their push to ARM, though, right? Another piece of this is like ARM is just it, it, like the, Intel, right, right? Like right, same thing. Yeah, it's the <laughs> mainstreaming of. It is. Uh, ARM, in a way, on Windows, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but no, Surface Pro 8 is basically the same form factor, same type cover, like I said. Uh, in fact, I reviewed it when I was in Paris last year because I, I took pictures of it in front of the Arc de Triomphe because <laughs> I was like, we got to bring this out <laughs> into the world. So it has like a bigger display, Thunderbolt 4, all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> nice. That's nice. All right, so this is less of a story than I thought it was. Well, yeah, it's it's... I, I, I call it a branding story. Yeah, I think. yeah. It, it was a little confusing that they had two different Surface Pros. Right. Yeah. Maybe. No, and Windows Central um, said, and I think this is a good way to look at it. It's a it's a nod to ARM or a win for ARM if right. they do this, right. right? Right. Yeah. ARM is now an equ is equal an equal partner in effect. Yeah. 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 That's a little bit of a smoke screen. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, it is. That's, it that's is. the theory. Yeah. That's the theory. Yeah. Um, that's the theory. Cool. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do an Xbox thing. Mary Jo, mm -hmm. uh, I think Sirachi wants your attention, so I'll let <laughs> He seems to be signaling something. He uh, is. But Paul Therat is here with the latest news from Xbox. Last week, uh, Sony announced that they were raising the price of the PlayStation 5 in all major markets in the world except the United States. <laughs> so, interesting. Um, basically, by what we'll call 50 euros or 50 pounds or maybe $50. Um, because this thing was already not expensive enough. Um, so, naturally, uh, reporters went to Microsoft and Nintendo and said, Hey, are you guys going to do the same thing? And Microsoft said, No. 
Um, <laughs> the interesting thing about the Xbox is there there are two versions of the console, as you probably know, Series S and Series X. Series S is the smaller, cheaper, slightly less powerful version. Um, they offer that at a starting price of $300. Well, I'm sorry, a price of $300. Um, which is a really cheap way to get into kind of a next gen console. It's a it's a nice value. It was already a great value. I, I think this helps uh, put that over the top. The um, uh, Xbox Series X is got to be four ninety nine five hundred dollars, so it's a lot more expensive. And I think with the I don't know where Sony's at, but the, the Sony's Sony's prices are higher, and now they're even more and higher still. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, things could change in the general, but as of now, Microsoft says we have no plans to change the price of our hardware due to inflation or huh. increased procurement costs, et cetera, et cetera. So they'll think about it, but for now, they're sticking where they are. Uh, let's see. So tomorrow is September 1st, and that means Microsoft is going to start announcing games with gold titles for the, well, they have for the month, and then eventually we'll also get some Game Pass titles. We got a little bit of news there as well. So games with gold. Um, we're still splitting title. This is actually kind of interesting. We have 360 games. We have an Xbox, an OG Xbox game. This is going to be one of the, geez, Louise. It's going to be one of the last times that happens. Sorry. That kid, I'll tell you, either that or the tornado's <laughs> coming closer. Yeah. Are we in no, tornado uh, season still? Yeah, we are. I don't know what's going on here. I would look, so, just make sure you're going to be okay. It, no, it's a, it's an Amber Alert. Oh, um, I tur I've turned those off ages ago. Yeah, I never go out. So, I can't help. <laughs> um, <laughs> two of the games coming this month are, um, well, probably Xbox One titles. I, it's weird. Oftentimes, we don't differentiate between uh, Xbox One and Series X and S, but I believe these are Xbox One titles. But the big news is, one of the games coming this month is Portal 2, which is an Xbox 360 title. It's an absolute classic. Yep. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely want to get that. If you have not played this game, my God, this is your it's chance. Free. To so it's, it's free. It's yeah, free. Excellent. Excellent. Get game. it. So that's been one of the best games with gold titles in memory. I can't remember the last time I was actually excited about one of these things. So this is a good one. That's a good. That's a good game. Um, Microsoft has not announced the first selection of Xbox Game Pass titles for the first half of September yet. That should be coming any day now. However, they had kind of an out of sync extra announcement about Game Pass the other day, and they announced that uh, several new humble game titles are coming to Game Cross uh, Game pass across PC, console, and cloud soon. <laughs> so we don't know when exactly that's going to happen. I don't recognize any of these games. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I guess I'm increasingly out of touch here. But Midnight Fight Express, Moon's Cars, Coral Island, Ghost Song, Infinite Guitars, Proteus, I feel like I'm just saying words, and Signalis are the names of these. I have no, I've never heard of any of them. But. And Kaizala. No. And Kaizala, <laughs> exactly. I feel like I'm missing a story in here. Um, so Microsoft is also now testing what they're calling a, con a consolidated game library uh, in on Xbox, I should say. So this is like a way to see your full library across not just the games you bought and maybe you're getting through uh, incentives like uh, game. I'm losing my mind. Game. I already forgot the name of it. Uh, game, games with gold. Thank you. Um, but also Game Pass, uh, EA Play, you know, that kind of thing. So they're, they're basically, this is just something that's happening right now in the um, Insider program. But they're basically looking at how they can surface these games a little bit better. I don't. I don't really see a huge difference here, to be honest. But anyway, they're try I think they're just trying to... There are so many different ways you can access games now on Xbox, through Xbox, whether you're on a console or PC. I think they're just trying to make this make a little bit more sense. And I think the, the thing with Xbox Game Pass in particular is a lot like Microsoft 365, where you have a lot of stuff going on that you probably don't even know you have access to. And uh, this is just kind of a neat way to surface that. So they're kind of promoting the stuff as if it were in your library because you're paying for the subscription and... You get the idea. Um, I think it was last week or two weeks ago we talked about this white, horrible-looking Xbox Elite Series 2 controller that was rumored. Um, it has popped up on Amazon Mexico. It has since been deleted. Um, but now we have an official render of it, and it is just as ugly as I thought it was. Um, it's the panda bear controller. 
<laughs> it's not it's not attractive. It's too bad. Also, I'll just point out again, not to be a jerk about it, but this is the old style Xbox wireless controller, so it doesn't have the share button in the middle. Um, there is a button in the middle, but it's for switching between profiles. That's one of the unique features of the Elite controller. Um, so they're going to have to figure out a way to fix that in my mind. But anyway, apparently this is going to come out before they do that. That's too bad. So whatever. I don't care about it. Um, and if you're following video game news at all, you probably know that Sony recently announced that they were going to dramatically expand the number of games we're going to make available on PC. And I think the, I think the figure was 50% of its games, which previously were all mostly PlayStation exclusives, were going to pop up on PC. And they sort of said mobile too. And it was like, well, how's that going to work? Um, this past week, they announced a new PlayStation Studios mobile division. And um, they are going to start producing mobile games. I think this is the smartest thing in the world. I don't understand why Nintendo hasn't done this. I don't understand why Microsoft hasn't done this. I'm sure Microsoft will point to Xbox Game Pass and more specifically cloud gaming as their solution for mobile. But I really like the idea of individual downloads and purchases and uh, native games on platforms and just making them available on mobile. So... Uh, I don't know what Microsoft's doing, but Sony is going all in on expanding their portfolio beyond uh, just the console, which I think, again, is super smart. So we'll see what comes of that. But um, this just seems like a good idea to me. That's Very it. nice. See? see? That was easy. <coughs> that wasn't bad. And here's Zirachi once more. <laughs> good to see you back, cat. I like that the She's cat bad. gets agitated when I talk about Xbox. <laughs> he does. As soon as, he, as soon as you say Xbox, he gets up and runs like, off. And then he What's he talking about? He senses you're upset, Mary Jo. Like, exactly. Like, why, yeah, exactly. Why is mom upset? Right, right. Well, <laughs> is that the whole guy driving this? her crazy again? <laughs> uh, get him. All right. Real quick, take a break. Come back. Back mm -hmm. of the book, just around the corner. But I want to tell you better. Sponsor Infra Scale. I-N-F-R-A S-C-A-L-E. I don't have to tell you, uh, you know, I'm sure that the statistics for ransomware attacks are just alarming. Betanews.com says cyber criminals can penetrate 93% of company networks. That's, how, that's like everybody's vulnerable, right? And it's not just big companies getting hit. 46% of small and medium businesses have been victims of ransomware attacks, almost half. Not us so far, knock on wood. And not you, if you've got InfraScale cloud backup. We always say backup is the key, right? Because if bad guys encrypt everything, you still have a secure backup. And that's what InfraScale does. It provides the security you need to manage backups. And really importantly, secures them from hackers or adverse events. It's not really a backup if it can be modified, right? Or, you know, if disaster is affected. You can sleep easier at night knowing your company will never have to pay a ransom. <sighs> you can back up and protect SaaS, everything. SaaS applications, endpoints, servers, VMs. Execute your disaster recovery on site. Or if, it's, if, if there is a disaster in the cloud. Every company needs a secure endpoint data protection solution that's easy to install and manage, and that's InfraScale. InfraScale offers this by integrating with Hyper-V and VMware, and you can get, as a result, site-to-site -site failover with orchestration in the InfraScale cloud. So you can run anywhere. Keep hackers away. Immutability is the key, by the way, to all of this. That's, that's at the core of how the product is designed. InfraScale Data is encrypted, even in storage, so no one can alter it. Immutable. With InfraScale backup and disaster recovery, you'll be ready for whatever comes your way, whether it's a server crash, human error, malicious activity, a natural disaster. According to Gartner, the average cost of downtime caused by local or site-wide incidents across all industry sectors is $5,600 per minute. Per minute! $330,000 an hour. <laughs> what? Clients and partners alike, including MSPs and VARs. Yeah, MSPs, VARs. You should be interested in this too because you can use it for your clients. Trust in for scale backup and recovery solutions to help keep their businesses running. Eliminate downtime and data loss with the most cost-effective enterprise-grade data protection solutions. More than 65,000 com companies now are protected by 
infrascale. And if disaster strikes, you, you're back to work. Remember that number? $330,000 an hour? Your applications, your data, your systems are recovered and available in record time. Really keeps the costs down. Their award-winning world-class support is there to help you too, 24-7. And now they have SSD for fast backups and recovery at no extra charge. Whatever your data, whatever your environment, InfraScale provides continuity and resiliency for your business. Visit InfraScale.com slash twit. Sign up for a free demo. See how InfraScale protects your business today. InfraScale.com slash twit. I-N-F-R-A. InfraScale. S-C-A-L-E dot com slash twit. The solution to ransomware. InfraScale. Thank you, InfraScale, for supporting Windows Weekly and don't forget, you support us. It's a very important part of the whole deal here is if you go to that address, then they know you saw it here. Infrascale.com slash twit. Back of the book time. We kick things off with Paul Thorat and his app of the week this week. Yeah, I'm doing this in backwards order today. You'll see why in a moment. Um, last week, a gentleman on Twitter, Kevin Lloyd, recommended an app called Image. Image Glass, which is a free lightweight image viewer for Windows. So I retweeted it. I went to the site. I clicked on the top link, which was the Microsoft Store. I saw that it was maybe 8 or $9, and I thought, yeah, I don't know. And But in the back of my mind, I was like, this guy, I'm pretty sure he said this thing was free. And so I went back to the site, and sure enough, this thing is free. If you get it from anywhere but the Microsoft Store, it's free. So I'm not saying you shouldn't support the author of this application, but there is a free version available on the web, and it is fantastic. So... Some number of months ago, I recommended something called Irfan Win, which is an awkwardly named but famous uh, Windows application. Yeah, his, for it's his Wing. name, Irfan. Okay, so. Irfan, Irfan Win. There you go. Um, that's a, not a good name for an app, but anyway, um, <laughs> it's it's okay. The reason you want to replace uh, photos in Windows 10 or 11 for viewing photos and other pictures is that it's terrible. It's awful. And one of the, yeah, and one of the ways it's terrible is you could have a maybe you open an item on your desktop or in a folder. Sometimes it lets you navigate between all the other items in that folder, and sometimes it doesn't. And I have no idea why, but I really like this uh, glass, or what they, image glass, image glass, right? So it's super lightweight. You can get rid of all the toolbars and all that stuff. There's only one toolbar, but it has all the information about the file in the title bar, which I think is really smart. And it correctly navigates between photos in a folder, and it's really fast. It's a, it's a great app, so uh, definitely check that one out. And it's open source, and it's in the store, yeah. right? It is in the store, but you can nice. just download it from the web as well. Yeah, yep. very good. May I interrupt for a quick news flash? News flash. Arm sues Qualcomm <gasps> and Nuvia for using Ooh. licenses without approval. Ask Qualcomm to destroy designs developed under Nuvia agreements with Arm. Whoa! Oh what? What? That's crazy. Whoa! It's so that's how you this handle the uh, merger. This this is not good if huh. you're a WOA fan. <laughs> so I, the one thing I, I will throw out there that, I, and again, I, I don't know much about this stuff, but ARM is, they kind of make the, ref, well, they're not even really reference designs, but they make the, yeah. they design chipsets that other companies like Qualcomm and Apple use as the basis for their own designs. I did yeah. notice in this past year that uh, ARM, ARM Holding or whatever it's called, came out with a chipset for PCs for, for I think the first time. And I thought that was kind of interesting, right? Because, you know, Qualcomm has for years now been working on their own PC chipsets, and we've been talking about Nuvia just as recently mm -hmm. as today. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, I wonder if Arm kind of went to them and said, yeah, you need to use our PC designs as the basis for what you're doing. And they were like, yeah, we're not doing that. I don't know. That's, <laughs> wow. that's kind of interesting. Right? Yeah, it's on Reuters right now, and it's going on tech meme right now. <laughs> that's okay. a big story. Thank you for the breaking yeah. news. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it is. Yep, it is. Uh, we will be covering that, I'm sure. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Mm. Okay. I'll so write about that. I think that's, that here. probably holds up the uh, NVIDIA Nuvia yeah, acquisition. Yeah, I would guess that too. <laughs> oh, boy. What a mess. Yeah. Poor NVIDIA. I'm really starting to actually feel. No, not NVIDIA. I know. Um, no, uh, not Nu uh, Nuvia. Qualcomm. Qualcomm, Qualcomm bought Nuvia. Nuvia. I think they're, they've already yeah. oh, they finalized that. That's done. No. No, they've done it. They've, oh, they've, okay. They own. They That's own the why they're company. suing. Yeah. But, I get it. Both of them. But what they're yeah. saying is, you can't use this as the basis for new chipsets. Like, ooh, uh, that's interesting. I'm curious what the rationale ooh. is there. 
definitely. Because ARM, I mean, license, that's what ARM's business is, is licensing. Right. Right. Licensing right. chipset designs. Yeah. Right? Before uh, Qualcomm bought Nuvia, Nuvia was an ARM licensee that ah. was making their own designs. ARM is seeking an injunction that require Qualcomm to destroy the designs developed under Nuvia's licenses. So ARM's saying, we licensed it to Nuvia. It uh, cannot be transferred to Qualcomm. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, That's ridiculous. They want to sell them more licenses. Exactly. Licenses. Right. Uh, ARMS is so, okay. ARMS said mm -hmm. those licenses cannot be transferred to Qualcomm without our approval. We do not approve. <laughs> wow. Uh, Qualcomm, of course, paid $1.4 billion <laughs> for uh, Nuvia, probably thinking, oh, we're going to get those licenses. Yep. 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 So maybe it's fixable, but it'll cost. It may not be, you know, because I mean, I'm sure Qualcomm's like one of their biggest customers, if not their biggest customer. So mm. it yeah, may not exactly. be. It may just be. Look, you got you guys. You you can't this just is use more that. of a. We're going to put this public because you didn't uh, yeah. do what we wanted yeah. privately. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so they'll settle. And, okay. Yep. Yeah. App pick of the week number two. Yeah. So I was talking about doing some kind of. I had. A rant last week, I think it was last week, about ads and mm -hmm. trackers and stuff. And Leo recommended Next DNS. I've been using it ever since, and I love it. And yeah, I want to recommend good. it to others. Um, good, good, good. It's uh, there's a couple ways you can use this thing. You can use it as a whole house solution if you configure your That's router how to I use do it. Next DNS. Yeah, everything goes through. Um, it. Yeah. Apparently, there are issues with Google Wi-Fi, which is what I'm using right now. So oh. I've just been testing it surprise. on individual. Yeah, <laughs> what a shock! Individual device. I know. I know. Um, yeah, no, it's been it's, it's been easy though to put it on individual systems, not just to computers, but phones and mm. tablets. Too. Yeah, and so what I found is honestly, for my purposes, I really just want it on mobile devices because that's where all the the mobile crap is so terrible. Um, on Windows, you know, I don't really need it for like applications. You know, I'm not worried about what Adobe is doing or you know, I use Microsoft Office or whatever. I don't use a lot of mobile apps, and I'm not confronted by unnecessary ads on Windows, except in web browsers, which is kind of the tip of the week bit of this. So I'll just say next DNS, you can test it for free. So there's no, there's no harm, no foul, just trying it. If you want to protect all your devices with unlimited bandwidth, it's, I think it's $20 a year. It's nothing. So um, it, it definitely, it's work. It's, it's been a game changer. It's really nice. Um, however, if you're just concerned with PCs, I mean, and this is the tip of the week, I guess I usually do this first, but um, we've talked about this a little bit before, but um, you could use NextDS, of course, that would, that would <laughs> solve the problem. Um, but really, uh, mostly what you're concerned about on a PC is your browser. So for starters, get a real web browser, not that Chrome thing you're using right now or Edge or whatever that don't do anything to prevent blockers or, <clears throat> or trackers, rather. Um, or if, and, uh, meaning get something like DuckDuckGo or Brave, which is what I'm using. Or if you have to use Chrome or Edge or Firefox even. Get the right extensions that do those block uh, that does that blocking as well. Um, it's just this is the minimum, <laughs> you know. Like, like, I, it it hurts my brain to think that most people in the world probably just sign into Chrome and use it and don't do anything to prevent it from tracking you across the internet. And then you'll go to work and complain about how you search for a pair of shoes. And now all you see are ads for those shoes, and you have no idea how that happens. <laughs> um, that's how that happens. <laughs> so, you know, and that happens in Edge too. Sorry, I, you know, I know they made a big deal of the three big buttons for tracking protection. It could be lax or normal or strict or whatever they call it. It's like, isn't that exciting? It doesn't stop anything, guys. It doesn't stop anything. Mm -hmm. Microsoft has just as much of a incentive to allow you to be tracked for ad purposes as Google does. In fact, in some ways, they probably have more because they haven't made a good business of this yet, but they're working on it. <laughs> so anyway, protect yourself at the very, at the very least, protect yourself. This would be the time to point out that not only is it Google and Microsoft, but Apple also does ads. Yep. Oh yeah. I mean, honestly, all the big tech companies, Amazon too, are ad companies. There's a lot know, of money all, to be made. They're, that all, way. they're all just mm -hmm. as terrible as each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you have specific advice here. I use AdBlock Plus on Chrome. I use Disable HTML5 Autoplay, and I use something called UBlock Origin, which is the big UBlock Origin. The best. Chart. Chrome is rapidly uh, phasing out all blocking because yep, Google. Yep, because that's their yeah. business model. They make you know eighty something percent of their revenues with ads. Yeah. I mean, what do you mm -hmm. think they're going to do? Right. So right. that's why I like Firefox. Firefox UBlock. Mm -hmm. Firefox UBlock Origin. Pretty close mm -hmm. to heaven. An XDNS, you you 
you shouldn't yep, you got the shouldn't see anything. the holy trinity of blocking yeah. right there mm-hmm. yeah yep mm-hmm. Like people will sometimes complain, oh, I can't, I can't use YouTube with all the, all the ads. And I say, why? What? I don't see ads. Any. What ads? What ads? <laughs> what are you talking about? There are no ads on YouTube. I actually do pay for YouTube to not have ads, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's worth uh, it, it by comes, the way. Yeah. It comes as part. I, I watch YouTube every single day, yeah. like literally. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, don't, don't think I'm not a cheapskate. <laughs> I mean, I, I should say I, I pay know for people, a lot of content. We all people, you have no a, idea how much co- all I pay of for us content. are spending more on yeah. content than ever before. Yeah. For content yeah. companies to complain, right? I'll just refer to, refer you to my rant from last week. I I have a big problem <laughs> with services that I pay for showing me ads, and especially yeah. ads that are just intrusive, autoplay video things that you can't stop or pause in any way. Like I I. I'm I'm done with that. That's mm-hmm. just unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Also, yes, my website has ads, but yeah. I also offer so a do we. to pay to not to see them. So yeah. and so do we. Premium program. Yep. We came up so. with that as being the kind of nice compromise. I want to yep. make it always to be free, uh, and yeah. and but we have to pay for it. So there yep. you'll get ads, and if and I think we charge seven bucks a month right. for all of our shows plus a lot of other content. And yep. I feel like that's that not a lot. A lot. Yeah, that's not a not, lot. It's not bad. Hands on windows, for instance. Mm-hmm. Paul's great show. We that guy. Show. That guy. <laughs> uh, so you get a lot for seven bucks, and I feel like that's a good compromise. And I think so. I don't. We haven't yet done the math to know whether that makes up for what we lose. I think it. I think it's something that will change over time too. You yeah. have to kind of keep looking at it. But I, I'll just We're say happy too, with you know, it at this point, I there think. are things we could do as an organization to. Prov- to make it hard on ad blockers, right? Like we could literally, you know, so you'll see sites that will do that. It looks like you're using an ad blocker. Sorry, you can't come in here. Like we don't do that. Like we sort of- Thank you. We hope, we hope people will do the right thing, you know? Um, I'm literally teaching you how not to do the right thing. But I'm also saying, you know, in my particular case, like in, in with Twit as well, you know, there's a premium option. A I think that's option. fair. Yeah. Um, I use ad blockers because it also blocks malware. Yes. It, it it eliminates this incredible drain on your bandwidth and yeah. your battery. That's right. It actually improves the performance and reliability of the systems you're yeah. using. Yeah. I, I it's I, we have to figure that we collectively as a a content world or whatever need to figure out something well, better than web ads. Paywalls right? is what it's going to end up being. Yeah. yeah. Uh, either that or and in our podcasting world where it's going is uh, the Spotify model, which is it's right. exclusive. You have to use a special player, uh, mm-hmm. and you either get ads or you pay. But either way, we track you a hundred percent of the time. Sure. And so, you know, Spotify. If you listen on Spotify, they know everything about everything. Right. Um, and that's you know that's where we're headed. Unfortunately, it's not good for. It's as bad for uh, podcasts as it was for blogging. I mean, blogging became a very difficult thing to pursue as yeah. an independent. God bless you for, for doing it, Paul. It's. Well, it's not possible, I, I think, to make a, a living just with ads on a website. It's not anymore. Not, no, no, not without really making it oh. miserable on everybody. That day yeah. will come for <laughs> podcasting too, which makes me sad. Yeah, which is too bad. Yep. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, it's time for Mary Jo Foley to cheer us up with her enterprise pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so the same way Paul got somebody submitting something to him on Twitter, uh, the image glass pick. I had someone submit something on Twitter yesterday called Self X, S E L F X. I had never heard of this tool. Uh, it came from a Microsoft MVP named Damien Van Robes. Um, he posted the link on my site, uh, sorry, on my tweet, on my Twitter stream, and I clicked on it and I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. It's a tool that's meant to help IT pros reduce the number of tickets and calls they get from their <coughs> from their clients and their users. Um, so it's it's a web-based tool that this guy developed himself, I believe. It's very modifiable. Um, he shows how you can modify it, add your own um, issues to the thing and have it show a display to your users. And I'm like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. Well, it must be very interesting because on my Twitter stream, hundreds of people are chiming in and saying, this is amazing. I want this. I Can I have this? And he said, yep, it's free. You can use it. Go ahead. So if you want to um, see if it might be something that would be right for you, go to his site, S-Y-S-T and deploy. So syst and deploy.com. And 
You it's going to put me out of business. It's the, 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 <laughs> the tech guy show is over. Everybody's going to download <laughs> this and it's done. It's pretty, it looks wow. pretty interesting, right? Um, yeah. He uses PowerShell. Um, he says, here's how it works. He explains to you how it uses XAML and how the GUI displays and how you can add in your own issues for your customers and change colors, change languages. It's, it looks very, very modifiable. So um, kudos to Damien for posting that. And if you want to check it out, systemdeploy.com for self X. Excellent. Very nice. Uh, that's the enterprise pick. What about a code name? So I wouldn't call this really a strictly a code name. I don't even know if it's a final name or what I would categorize this as, but I've talked about it before on Windows Weekly, CBL Mariner. CBL Mariner is Microsoft's own Linux distribution that they built themselves. CBL is common base Linux. Um, they only use this internally. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. They Like they use it for, again, I'm going to use, Talk about Azure Kubernetes service. I think I talked about it three times on the show. <laughs> um, in Azure Stack, they use it in um, Azure Percept, which is an AI tool that they have. They use it in the Windows subsystem for Linux and their PlayFab tool for the gaming community. Well, today they posted that they're using it in another place that's very interesting. Um, they've got a team inside of Microsoft called the the Creator Platform and Experiences Group, CPE. So the CPE is the team inside Microsoft that does the Xbox storefronts for PCs, for consoles, and for mobile. And they posted something on the tech community site today saying, we're using this cool distribution Microsoft built, CBL Mariner, we're moving everything to it. And they said, listen to this quote, like this tells you how important this distribution's getting. Gaming security is driving all Microsoft gaming services to migrate to Mariner as the gold standard Linux OS with the goal of 100% adoption before the end of this calendar year. Like Microsoft is all in on this and it makes you kind of wonder what are they going to do with CBL Mariner? Is it just going to stay internal or will it become something else? Just the name CBL kind of implies that it's not intended to be a full right. Linux. Full, like commercial Linux distribution, right? right? It, and it's on GitHub. Like it's it's not positioned as, hey, we want customers right. to use this. But the fact that more and more teams in Microsoft are moving to it is yeah. very interesting. There's a lot to be said for starting with a minimalist uh, install yeah. of something and then you add what you want, nothing more. Mm -hmm. A lot of Linux users do that with Arch. Uh, yep. Huh. CBL Mariner. CBL Mariner. Now, this beer company is absolutely properly named. It is. This is an abomination. Mary Jo Foley, <laughs> our, beer, our beer of the week. So after uh, picking a very hard to pronounce beer last week, the, por uh, the Portuguese named Japanese beer. Yeah. We're going for an easier choice. Anyone can say this, yes. <laughs> Abomination Brewing, they are in North Haven, Connecticut. They oh, make a lot of excellent it. beers. Yep. Excellent beers. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's about to be Labor Day weekend here in the United States. It's the end of summer. Tomorrow uh, is uh, September 1st. Oh, yeah. So this this beer is perfect for it. It's called Last? Drippy Popsicle. <laughs> Last chance to drink an <laughs> orange beer. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's a beer. Uh, it's a sour. It's flavored with orange and vanilla beans. Uh, on the can, they recommend that people freeze the can for oh, an hour. Good idea. So Make it slushy. even more like a popsicle yeah. when it comes out. All right. I want it. Um, That's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. And um, it's it's categ categorized as a pastry sour. So pastry beers mean you put like pastry ingredients in like chocolate or vanilla or any kind of thing. Graham crackers, all kinds of crazy stuff, marshmallows. Uh, and it comes out like a smoothie. Um, wow. So it, some people call that a milkshake style or a smoothie. Um, it's just, it's, you know, if you like a popsicle, a drippy popsicle on a hot summer day, you're going to like this beer. I'm going to freeze it. This can be, yeah. a, Paul, if you had two slushy machines, you'd have one for rosé and one for exactly. orange popsicle, drippy popsicle. <laughs> uh, all right. 5.5 .5 ABV. You could drink it all day. You could. Yeah, you could. Yep. <laughs> I like, like rosé I like day. sours. Yeah, yeah, I like sours. <laughs> All right, Paul and Mary Jo, they've done it again. Another fabulous edition, rant-filled of uh, <laughs> Windows, Windows Weekly. 
Uh, uh, who's going to upset me next week? <laughs> you know what? I'm hoping now that we're going to get some more news fall starting. We'll have fewer rants and more news, oh, this, but you never know. Rants yeah, are fun. There you go. I'm enjo- look, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you can see the bright red color. It's all about getting the bull angry. Windows Rant Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Jo Foley writes about Microsoft at ZDNet, the beautiful new lime green ZDNet. Mm-hmm. You can find her stuff at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Paul Thorot, his blog is thorot.com, T-H-U-R-R-O-Double-Good.com. Mm-hmm. His books, uh, including the Field Guide to Windows 10 at leanpub.com. And they join together at the hip every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC for Winders Weekly. If you are a winner or a dozer, you can join us uh, live by watching the stream or listening to it at live.twit.tv. If you're watching live chat live at irc.twit.tv. Club members also can chat in the Club Twit Discord, which is a, a, a nice place, a good hang, as they say. One of my favorite hangs. Uh, we have lots of stuff going on in the Discord. We're going to have a uh, kind of a uh, fireside chat with some of our members coming up. We have a number of shows that are in the Discord, also put out on the Twit Plus feed for club members only. Because they're new, they don't have an audience yet, or uh, they don't have advertisers yet, so the club pays for it, in effect. That includes Paul's Hands-On Windows. Micah Sargent's Hands-On Mac, the Untitled Linux Show with Jonathan Benefit, Jonathan Bennett. <laughs> uh, but he is, it is a great benefit. Uh, Giz Fizz with Dick D. Bartolo. Stacy's Book Club. We're trying to decide on our next volume. Had a lot of fun with Claire and the Sun. All of that, plus ad-free versions of every show. And it's, all, as I said, only 7 bucks a month at twit.tv slash club twit. You could get, if you just wanted to hear Hands-On Windows, you could buy that for two ninety nine a month. Same for Hands-On Mac. Uh, so that's another option for you. But all of that is at twit.tv slash club twit. After the fact, on-demand versions of the show available, ad-supported at twit.tv slash ww. There is also a YouTube channel devoted to Windows Weekly. And, of course, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client and get it automatically the minute it's available. Uh, and if your podcast client allows for reviews, please... Would you leave us a five-star review and tell the world how wonderful this show is? Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Oh, one more thing about Jensen Harris. (laughs) (laughs) Good Lord, no. Uh, We're going to get him on the show next week, Paul. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) The thing is, I... He's a good guy. I, I, I that's the that's the hard thing. Like I like Jensen. I, I haven't spoken with him in a while, but I don't know. And you never will again. So it's all it's all good. I yeah, want to see a, a Twitter war between the two of you. I think that. Well, be okay. <laughs> That'd be so exciting. Hey, we should talk Linux. It's the operating system that runs the internet, but your game consoles, cell phones, and maybe even the machine on your desk. But you already knew all that. What you may not know is that Twit now has a show dedicated to it, the Untitled Linux Show. Whether you're a Linux pro, a burgeoning sysadmin, or just curious what the big deal is, you should join us on the Club Twit Discord every Saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv slash club twit and sign up. Hope to see you there.